Okay, guys, it says that we are live. We're going to go ahead and get started. It is 5 o'clock Central Time. It is 6 o'clock East Coast Time. And uh, I think we're ready to get started. We've got a very active chat going on over there on the YouTube YouTube side right now. We've got a couple people hanging out on the Gun Channel side, as usual. Always a good thing. Uh, man, all right, guys, welcome to Caliber Corner, episode number 95. We're going to talk about anything and everything that you use to enhance your firearm to make your firearm more enjoyable when you're at the range whatever you use it they could be anything from furniture sites anything used to adapt the firearm to work better for you uh hopefully we're going to talk about it so feel free to throw your suggestions out there as we cover the various types of firearms that we're going to show off and uh and uh demonstrate or show off here in the episode and uh let us know if you got any questions we'll definitely try to answer them remember guys make sure you keep it ghibli you can check out poco ghibli over there on the gear website store where you can get the team ghibli t-shirt with the night strike on there uh, and myself so make sure you guys go check it out a little shameless promotion for myself and to make no promises this is my makeshift uh patch poster i got going on over here i need to get a panel going on at some point during the episode this is probably gonna fall just to give you guys a heads up so anyway uh real quick let's just see who's joining us on the youtube side and then we will go ahead and let the panel introduce themselves we've got a small panel today but hopefully we'll have a few more people joining in i unfortunately didn't get the invites out to about quarter to five so here we go we have got the Rolling Trip is with us. What's going on? Cal Bears 32 specials out there. We got Yoder Texas in the house. Night Strike 1 is with us. Night Strike, get over here. Come on, man. We need you with us. Uh, Rich White's with us, and uh, Rich White is with us. Yes, he is. Tacos and French fries. And uh, let's see, Kingpin's out there. Kingpin is over here. Uh, let's see, is that about it? Sam, Sam of Anarchy 92 is joining us. Good to see you, sir. And I think that's about it. So hopefully I have a few more people joining in as we run through this. So... Um, we're going to go and let the panel introduce themselves. Uh, David Bowling, we will start with you, the original Kingpin. How's your day going, brother? Not too shabby. Thanks for All having right. me. All right. What's coming up on the channel, man? What do you got going on? If you guys haven't checked it out, you need to go over to David Bowling's channel. It's very cool. What's coming up, man? Uh, I've got a, a mail call i got to do a friend of mine. Uh, that I'm not going to mention who they are because they're yeah. On the internet, kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, I made a pretty cool range bag with a bunch of stuff in there, so I'm gonna do a video for them on that. And then shortly after that, I've almost finished my Hero Maxim uh, research, so I should have oh. the Firearms Inventors Playing Card video coming out soon. Cool. Cool. Very cool. A lot of good stuff going on down the pipe. So, man, I do appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. And of course, we've got Rich White with us. Chris White, how's your day going, man? You doing all right? Yeah, doing better than what I have been doing. And yes, folks, I am back finally. <laughs> <laughs> so you were out for a couple days. You had some illness going on. Is that what's going yeah. down? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we're glad you're back with you. I know I'm surprised point, you come down something. What's that? Yeah, at one point I had lost my voice and everything. It was like, oh, it was real bad. <laughs> that seems to be happening to a lot of people. I know a lot of people that went to some of the trade shows and stuff came down with some nasty stuff this year, too. So uh all right so let's see joining us on the uh, gun channel side i do see a little paper plane crash going on over there hello sir and uh, david bowling is over there too so guys make sure you check out gunchannels.com get over there get signed up it's an awesome community like-minded individuals if you are pro 2a and you're pro firearm you're definitely welcome over there and if you're not bring your opinions and it's always good to get into some dialogue and chat with people about it and uh you know it's, it's a really good place to go make sure you check it out and guntube.org make sure you guys support that over on patreon very good stuff, too. So um, I think we're just going to jump right into it, man. Uh, updates for you. It's finally done raining here in Nebraska, so I'm going to be getting some serious range time in pretty soon. Um, I've got five or six firearms I need to take out. A couple of them need to be zeroed. And I've got a new optic that I put on the uh, Bear Creek Arsenal 224 Valkyrie sitting over here. Holy cow. We got a little uh, primary arms classic scope. Nothing too expensive, but it should work better than what I had on there before. We're kind of working our way up the food chain for optics and ammo in that uh, rifle and see if it shoots a little bit better. Um, I've also got a really nice high-end 1911 I need to take out, but it's not the one I'm going to buy for myself, so don't worry about that. And I'll make that official announcement here sooner or later when I talk about which one I really want to get. Um, otherwise, man, I think we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. So when you talk about firearms accessories... Um, you really got to watch out because you can kind of fall into the uh, the mall ninja arena, which is kind of like where you, uh, you know, when you go to the the mall when you were a kid and they had the stores that would sell the, the ninja supplies, the throwing stars and swords and stuff. You get all tacked out and stuff. Um, you want to make sure you don't put too much crap on your firearm. It can make it a little more cumbersome. You should only have on there what you're going to need for the application that you see yourself using it for. 
or the potential application without getting a little bit too crazy. A lot of that's extra weight. It's extra bulk. It's more crap that can snag on things. And I've even accessorized out my rifle in ways that I think could be detrimental to me. And so we'll talk about that too in a, a conversation that we had with uh, Dead Horse and a few other uh, YouTubers too about things you want to watch out for when you accessorize your AR-15. So uh, just to let you guys know, I'll try to keep up on the chat on the YouTube side. If you guys got any questions, uh, make sure that you toss uh, them out there. And we'll try to answer them for you. So a question for you, David Bowling. Um, I'll put you on the spot here. What what would you say is probably the least effective accessory or item that you've ever bought for one of your rifles before? Is there something that you think you could probably just avoid from the get-go? I'm not necessarily talking magazines, but like something that just doesn't work for you, something you've had a negative experience with so far? Well, I personally don't do the accessories very much. Uh, I'm a scope, yeah. bipod, that's it. Okay. Uh, but I do have a friend that bought a vertical foregrip uh, and it just was a waste of time then he bought an angled foregrip and it just was a waste of time and then he bought a red dot and it was just a waste of time and then he bought a muzzle brake and it was just a waste of time now all that saying waste of time is he didn't take the time and effort to learn how to use it and properly install it and all that kind of stuff so there was that i'm not just saying that they're junk i'm just saying from my experience it didn't it didn't go well uh but i personally only accessories that that i really go for on a, on any type of gun will be a bipod and a scope now have you had any negative experiences with the optics that you box i think a lot of us when we first get those guns you spend all this money on these firearms you get them all dressed up and then when it comes to red dot you just buy that generic red dot that's on sale cabela's for 25 bucks or you just get that 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 one red dot that's marketed by five or six different brands you ever have a negative experience with anything like that well, I don't use the red dots. Uh -huh. I'm not a fan of the red dots, but yeah. when, I, when I got my first AR, it was my first gun, and I took it to the range, and I was all happy about it and showing it off to everybody. And a friend of mine was like, oh, I've got the perfect scope for that AR. And it was not the perfect scope. <laughs> uh, you can't focus in on 200 yards. Past 100 yards, you can't see where your bullets are impacting the target. Oh, my God. And okay. as soon as you get it focused – my AR, the Ruger, is a heavy barrel, and it doesn't have a muzzle brake on it. Okay. And, uh, it's extremely loud and shakes a whole lot when you shoot it. Like, yeah. It, it's got it's got a little bit of umph to it. Yeah. Every as soon as you take all the time to get a nice clear picture of your target, when you pull the trigger, it's like somebody rubbed mayonnaise all over it. I mean, it's no. not mayonnaise, uh, Vaseline all over it. So. <laughs> So the scope would lose its focus every single shot? Absolutely. Every oh, shot. my God. Yeah. Um, you know, and this can happen with name brand scopes, with high-end scopes. There's nothing that's perfect, and you can get by on cheaper stuff, too. But uh, what do you currently have for an optic on it right now? Are you running anything on your ARs? Uh, give me a second, and I'll pull them out. Okay. Okay, no problem. What I got on there. And I and I've you know I've shown off some of the the lower end scopes on the channel and I've put uh, at least a couple hundred rounds through each one especially with my Ruger Ranch rifle I'm actually testing another relatively inexpensive scope on it but I'm finding myself starting to go up a little bit um, in the price point when it comes to scopes and stuff like that uh, quick question I think from Patriot in the Dark I, I hope well first of all Calavera says so what we don't need three flashlights nine lasers two scopes and ten pistol grips no I think you only need one pistol grip maybe an angle four grip or vertical four grip if necessary and that's it. So Patriot in the Dark says, best grips for Colt 1911 Defender, new agent, sticky grippy. Um, I like those like scallop G10 grips that are very aggressive. I guess it depends on how much you want to train with a gun like that. I know Foos let me handle one of his CZ, one of his CZ pistols. And he had these really aggressive grips on that are almost like sharp sandpaper, man. I mean, if you got any kind of moisture in your hands or anything, that gun is not going to move when it's in your hands. So um, whatever those G10 scallop grips are, those are freaking nice. Although I love... Just a nice set of just checkered wood grips on a 1911. I just think it looks really good. Something simple that does the job. I mean, if it's good enough for, you know, a couple world wars, I'm sure it's good enough for the average person. Now, I'm, uh, not, yeah. I'm not very sophisticated when it comes to scopes. Uh, mm -hmm. But on my Colt AR, I've got a Nikon P223. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those and are that, nice. Yeah. That was pretty good. I like yeah. that. It doesn't really give me the the... 200 yard i want to see the hole go, going in the target but it does do a lot better and on my ruger i've got a nikon uh three by nine by 40 oh yeah and that's all it says on it's a bdc 
I don't really know. Like I said, I, I, it's I have a radical. Read. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, it's just not good. Yeah. It's not good at all. That scope is not good. No, that's the one. That's the one on my Ruger. Oh, and, uh, let me see. I can flip my camera. That's, that's the one you said that goes, gets all wonky and stuff every shot. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that's a Nikon. Yeah. And it's getting to now where it gets wonky. If you move the gun around too much, I mean, I, I think you need to send that in, dude. I wonder if you got yeah. any kind of a warranty on that still, if they go, if they do a lifetime or not. Yeah. I don't know. I bought it from a friend of mine at the range. So, uh, let me throw on the camera real quick and I'll show yeah, it. To yeah. You. Let's see what you got, man. Okay. When you come back here in a sec, we'll get that. Um, there is a quick little comment. It said Mossberg shockwave would be much more fun to shoot with the vertical foregrip. Oh, I don't disagree with you at all. In fact, we're going to go on to the Mossberg shockwave here in just a sec. So, all right, let's check it out. Can you see it? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now, what about that mount? Has that mount been okay? Because that's the exact same one that I've got on the uh, 224 Valkyrie behind me. Is oh, that yeah. Better, right? It's not going anywhere. Okay, see, so people were complaining about the, the, the nut stripping out on the threads. No. If you put too much, to it, put too much torque on. I mean, I don't. I'm not going to over tighten it because I don't want it to snap. But well, I, I mean, anything I, you, over tighten is going to be messed up. I mean, that's oh yeah, over tightening. I think a lot of people just don't, and they don't use the uh, inch pound uh, gauges when they tighten the, the nuts on the optics and stuff. You got to be careful so you don't bend. You know, put a ding in the tubes and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's. Have you ever thought about calling Nikon and get that sent in? No, no, I haven't. Yeah, I okay. just figured. Yeah, I, Two weeks ago, I had this one at the range, and it was just so frustrating. I wasn't even enjoying myself, and that's when I decided it's coming off of there. Okay. Uh, and but that's all I've done is decide that it's coming off there. What goes next or when it comes off, I haven't made that decision yet. Look into uh, primary arms. The one that I bought was 160, and it's the classic. It's a four to sixteen by forty-four, with just the standard mill dot reticle. Really nice. And well, that's, that's your... one I got on my Colt. This one's nice. Yeah. That's the P223. Okay. And, you know, like you said, you know, it's not going to get you to two, two or 300 yards to see the bullet holes going, but it'll get you on a silhouette, you know, a silhouette target for, you know, whatever length you're going to need for effective self-defense. That's for sure. You know, you don't have to worry about that. Is that like a, like, like a three to nine power or something like that? Are you talking about on the Ruger or on the Colt? Yeah, the uh, yeah, is that the the gold one that we just saw? The gold, the gold AR. Yeah, that's the Colt. This is a hold up. Let me slow I think it's a three. Are those a three to nine or two to six or something? I'm pretty sure it's a three by nine. Okay, okay. It's Let's underneath see. the scope, and I can't really see it because it's uh, oh, okay. My... Yeah, and I, you know, I've 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 looked at the Nikon's before. You know, they first came out with that line, the two twenty three line. I was kind of interested in it. Uh, then I started testing out some of the cheaper scopes just to see how well they run and stuff. It's um, a three by nine by 40. On oh, okay. Oh. Okay. Cool. I would definitely get a hold of them on that first one. It might be worth the, the 10 or 15 bucks shipping to send that other one in that, that, uh, larger one in and get that taken care of and see if you can get it fixed or see if they'll replace it. And see that, never, that never even crossed my mind. So yeah. there's another, there's another good reason to be a member of gunchannels.com because you can get information like this and not waste a bunch of time and money. And speaking of that, one of the gun channels members, Calvary 32 special says I have a Nikon three to nine by 40, 40 something BDC out of my bolt action 308 and it holds, it holds well. Might want to get that scope looked at. So there's got to be something internally that's just not right. And I mean, they can, like even my own center point, it's, it's, I put so many rounds through it at this point that it'll start to drift a little bit. You know, it's enough to get a couple shots out, but I've noticed that it starts to drift off a little bit. That's why I'm quit using it all together and just went with something a little bit nicer. Well, that's um, just the thing. When I, when I put, when I got a nice clear view and I put my crosshairs on 200, I'm hitting the center of the target and definitely 150 and 25. I can, I can do, you know, half inch groups, three or four shot burst or not burst, but you know what I mean? Groups. Yeah. 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 Groups of three. Yeah. It's just, you have to refocus it after every single shot. That's so not, yeah. It's not, yeah. Losing, it's not losing its line. So it's still in line. It's just the focus is going. Is there a little screw anywhere with a band that you can tighten? Is there any screws that you notice on it? Like on the magnification ring maybe, or the rear little diopter? Or is there, do you have anything that you can use to tighten it to put some tension on it? Whatever you turn to get it back into focus, is that loose? Does it have any kind of tension on it or not? 
Oh no, not at all. It's nice, smooth. Everything, oh. everything operates really smooth. It doesn't have yeah, any scratches it's... in it. You know, it's just. I think that the gun rattles and vibrates too much. I think this this gun is too much for this scope. Yeah, yeah. And I've already put I've put probably a good five six thousand rounds through this gun with the scope on here. So yeah, I would still see if you could send it in. Just as, they might want to look at it just because of. Tell them how many rounds you put through the rifle. Be like, look, man, I've shot this hundred, you know, hundreds of rounds every week for years, and it's not holding zero anymore. They might want to look at it. Their own engineers might want to look at it just for build quality and see what's going on. Because there could be something that's coming unstuck from the inside of it. There could be a mechanism that's shot on the inside of it. It's, uh, you know, it's really hard telling. Well, that's a cool idea. Like I said, I never even considered doing that. I figured yeah. it would go in the drawer with all the old ones. Oh. Call them and tell them you're disappointed with the quality and you want it, you want it replaced. And, and you expect there, you say, I've been buying Nikon stuff for years. I've got another Nikon product. I'm not happy with it. What are you guys going to do? They say, well, sorry to your warranty is expired. Then you say, okay, I'm not going to buy our products anymore. You know, I would get a hold of somebody at customer service and just put the pressure on them. They've got, Nikon's got the money to replace your scope. I mean, for what people pay for those things when they're new, you know, yeah. they can, they can afford to replace it. I mean, they're making hundreds of dollars off those things when they, you know, come on, man, it's Nikon for God's sake. They probably make a billion dollars a year in sales. So, and, and you know, you don't hear a lot of people complaining about them either. So that's part of it. Um, Blue Steel 44 says the Leopold VX1, uh, two to seven by 33 best value scope ever. Yeah, I think those are a sub $200 optic. I've looked into those before. Um, let's see. Somebody says, who is that? Patrick says the primary arms ACSS reticles, the best reticle period in my opinion. Yeah, the ACSS is really cool. Don't they also have the KISS reticle? There's the two reticles that they make. Um, I'm more of just kind of a, just, your, I just like your standard just your mill dots i think those are fine but yeah there's a lot of nicer ones that are out there yeah, i got the atss and um one time cyclops prism scope that i have on my uh ar-15 that's a nice reticle is that the one that has kind of a silhouette outline on it with like a crosshairs in it is that what i'm thinking yeah. of no this is the one where it's almost like um, a circle with the air or like the arrow it's got like the um neotech kind of sight but it also yeah. has yeah. The investment docks underneath for um, elevation and whatnot. And you got gotcha. then you got the um, wind um, for uh, leads for going left to right too, depending on what, how fast your target's going. Oh, so okay, okay. It does like all your bullet drop and your left to right compensation. Oh, nice. On nice. the um, reticle. And I'm running, by the way, guys, I'm running two screens. So if you keep me looking, see me looking over to the left, I'm kept, I'm keeping up on the uh, YouTube chat right now. And so, David, I got some advice for you from Calaveras. He says, uh, tell them that you are friends with internet celebrity uh, Travis P11. Tell them Travis P11 sent you. Dude, I've never done anything with Nikon before. I love their stuff, but I don't think I, I've, I've owned one point and shoot Nikon camera, and it actually got taken out by shrapnel bouncing off a gong. I put this camera like 10 yards away from a gong that I was shooting at from a couple hundred yards away. And I had some splash that came back on the camera and basically destroyed the camera. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I had to let him know that I, I, I can't waste it on something like that. I only <laughs> need like, have a P11 connection when I need to get into a secure location. That's right. That's right. That's what we're here for. The White House said, so hey, I know Travis. Yeah, exactly. They're like, who's he? Just, just some dude. Uh, and what else do we have here? Vortex warranty is hard to beat. No questions asked. Yeah, I do have the Vortex Viper that I put on the Mossberg. Uh, no, the uh, yeah, the Mossberg Patriot uh, six five Creed. More, I'm going to take that out this summer and see what I can do with it. I just like I said, it's been raining. We've had six or seven inches of rain the last two weeks, so everything's just like a pond and flooded everywhere. So it's just now starting to dry up. Um, what else do we have here? Any other questions on there? Let's let's get into shotguns a little bit because Rich, you got a little something to talk about. You know the. These the shockwave shotguns have really really dropped down in price now. I mean, they're I think I was seeing them for like two forty nine or something like that, or two ninety nine over on PSA if I'm not mistaken for the twenty gauge. Uh, Rich, what what accessories do you recommend and not recommend for the Mossberg shockwave? What would you uh, say? Let's see. Well, let's, let's look at mine and see what I did. All right, there you go. So this is not this is not the original. So front to back, front, front to, back, to back, this thing has been changed. <laughs> Almost every part on here. Other than the actual action in the mag tube and barrel, something's been changed on it. All right. We'll start with the front sight. Obviously, that is not a brass bead. That is the excess big dot in green. Okay. Let's see if I can get that three. Y'all can see that on there. Mm, nice, nice. It's much easier Here, to pick up when shooting it than focus on you now. Yeah. It's got the big white circle with the little <clears throat> in there. 
So, you know, at night, that thing, I don't know if I can get where you can see it glow or not, but it glows. I don't know if you can tell from that or not, but trying to shield. It was, it was when you, yeah, you can see it. Yeah, it does actually, it does, it does light up a little white ring when you show it in the camera, which, you know, if you've ever used a standard bead, that can be kind of frustrating, especially if you don't practice or train enough with your shotgun. Yeah, and the bead right. on this is so, was so, was small. I mean, it's a little yeah. big glass bead. If you got any kind yeah. of eye problems, obviously. <laughs> oh, yeah, no doubt, man. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah, yeah. But this, with that nice big white circle, and then if it's dark enough that where you see the glow of that, it's real easy to pick this up. And then okay. Or in a dark area, or even what if you if you don't got as much light, like say you're in an indoor range and you know how the stalls are, and it can be dark in there at times, even with those little lights they have on in the yeah. booth, you can really oh, yeah. light up. Okay, what are you doing for a sling mount on the front there? Uh, paracord. And you have it attached with just like a regular sling mount? Oh, you just tied it around? Oh, yeah, tied okay, it that's around. That's not a bad idea. Tied it around the loop that goes down and around the um, mag tube. I, uh, I got my Maverick 88 SP here, and I don't I don't know if the bead was supposed to be in the box or what. Is, you tell you um, your swivel your swivel mount or your sling mount yeah, right here in the end. I, I never got one with it. I got a hole for it, but I didn't actually get it in the yeah. box. So you can see this had the swivel. Okay. Okay. But All right. Somehow it got to where the screw strip, the screw part of the swivel strip. So I just took some paracord and put that around there, and that was the end of that. And, and the then your little loop, your your pump the handguard loop there is that this just the standard one that comes with it or you the standard one that came on the polymer group, uh, handguard that came on it or the you know your slide whatever you want to call it yeah yeah your foregrip or yeah yeah I took that off and then I put on a wooden one off of a sporting Mossberg twenty gauge uh, yeah the, this came off of a five hundred I got this through um oh what is it Nurix. Oh, Numer Gun Parts? Yeah. 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 Gunparts.com or whatever it is. Um, this thing fits my hand so much better than that honeycomb that mm. came on it. That thing was so small. Mm. It did not fit my hand very well. It this looks thing. nice, man. It looks like that sucker's seen some use, too. It really makes it kind of look like it's... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it just it's just aesthetically much more pleasing, but it does yeah. look like it's ergonomically way better to use, too. Yeah, it's much yeah. wider. Yeah, yeah, got nice. Ladder on the bottom, it just fits my hand. I feel I sound like Paul Harrell now, but it fits my hand so much better than the other one. <laughs> it fits then, my hand better. <laughs> and then I got the um, Velcro style stick on side saddle, which holds exactly yeah. the, the amount of rounds that this holds. This whole recommended accessory. Round. Get yourself a yeah. side saddle. Yep, always, always. And now, can yours? Good. Can you just tear yours off if you want to take it off and slap yeah. a fresh one on there? Yep. There you go. So, you know, when the zombie apocalypse yeah, happens, like, you're good to if go. I'm, if I want to use this for shooting <laughs> birds for whatever reason, I can just take this one off and put on one and they have like here's what it does. Uh, loves number seven dove shot, you know, throw that on there. Right oh, now, yeah. it's got number four bird shot in, on it. But All right. And then what else have you done to it? Well, obviously, you've got a pistol grip. Oh, that's awesome. Got now, is that a kit that you bought? That's a kit you bought for, right? Well, I didn't buy the kit. I bought it part by part because the kit comes with a different brace. I already had this brace because this is the brace that I used to have on my AR-15. So I bought the piece individual that they had in the kit. This is the same piece. It's made by Ergo. And you just put that on there and you can put any AR mag tube in here. And then it basically it makes your shotgun where it's like the back of an AR lower. Okay. You, you know, come up oh, in there. Yeah, yeah. It's just going to take your standard AR grip. Right. Um, standard grip and AR buffer tube. Are you running a commercial spec buffer buff, buffer tube or mill spec buffer tube when you put that on this there? Do you a, remember? This one's pistol. This is a pistol tube. Oh, right? pistol. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, this is one of the uh, SB oh, yeah. ones that uses the pistol tube. Now, which uh, SB brace is that? Is that this the original the SB brace? No, this is the SBM4. Oh, is that the new one then that just came out? No, or the most recent the new one? one? This is the one that the new one's based on. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, basically, the new one's the SBA4, which is the adjustable version of this. Okay. They took basically took the same mechanism that they have on the FBA3 and put it inside this. So I understand. That makes the new one adjustable, because right here would be where your adjustment piece would be. Now, how do you adjust that one if you need to? Does that There's nothing that you push in or no buttons or anything no, like that? Or? back and forth, which is why I have the paracord here, so it doesn't slide, doesn't slide forward. Okay, I got gotcha. you. And then I also use that to make the rear slings swivel. Okay. 
Have Perfect. you ever thought about putting a, like a Magpul, like an MOE grip on that, instead of just the regular A2, or do you prefer the A2 style or whatnot? The yeah, regular I'm, going, style? I'm going to be taking this off. I don't know if you've ever seen Indignant Arms, their grips. It's basically, it's an aluminum frame. Oh, you yeah, yeah. Scales on. Okay. I'm going to put one of those on here eventually. Now, you were you and I were talking in the pre-chat. You said on that stock, that definitely, does that, no, the, you, were, you were talking about the Keltec. With yeah, the, the shock that you feel through the, the basic stock on it does basically nothing or whatever, but yeah, the recoil there's no basically it looks like it should have a recoil pad, but the KSG does not have a recoil pad on it. That thing kicks like a mule. Okay. So how yeah. is the shock wave? Now I'm not gonna we're not gonna admit that we shoulder it, but how is the shock wave? How would one predict the shock wave recoil is? I would say <laughs> that the twenty gauge shock wave recoil with the SBM four is very manageable. <laughs> okay. Or would be very manageable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wink, wink. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, it, it would be very manageable. Yeah. See, we're talking about time zones over there in uh, the chat right now. Yeah, um, central time zone is definitely the best one. So <laughs> tell Rich why to give us a couch pop. Um, yeah, I don't I'll, know. Or our wife would appreciate that. Are, are you out I in the country where you could like just, so just push out the front door if you wanted to or what? Um, oh, there we go. Turn no, I used chatter. to be. I mean, I, I used to be on the country, but not anymore. All right. Yeah. Sorry, guys. No couch pop for today. So no. No, you might spill is... pop on the couch, but uh, yeah. yeah. There literally <laughs> will be a couch pop because I'm sitting on my reclining sofa right now. Yeah, there you go. Oh, man, that's that'd be nice. Um. So, David, I got a question for you. David, do you have a shotgun? I guess we've never really, I don't know if I've noticed it in your videos before. You have a 12 or 20 gauge or 410 or anything? Uh, I've got a Winchester Model 37A single action or single or single shot break action, which okay. is just something that my brother, my dad bought my brother a long time ago, so that doesn't get used. Then I've got the Mossberg 500 and the uh, Remington 870 Express. Now, do you just keep them in just their stock configuration or have you done anything to those at all? Uh, we got scopes on them. Uh, and then uh, the 870 has got one of those little side saddle type of deals that you wrap yeah. around the butt so you can put extra mags in it, which I think does, or extra uh, shells in it. So I think that's pretty cool. And then are, is the scopes are you using them for, for deer hunting with slugs? Is that kind of how you have them set up? How you, how you have them set up or what? No, they're basically just set up for 25 yard target, 50 yard target. Oh, okay. You know, okay. I don't hunt, so they, uh, they don't, I don't worry about that. Yeah. No, that sounds like a decent setup. Um, so we got what's going on over here. Tread says my dad bought a KSG and it's still in the box. It's been over a year. Tread, if you guys don't want that, you can just ship it to my FFL. I'll be more than happy to test it out on the channel for you. Uh, remember, guys, in Nebraska, the snow goose season does not have a uh, magazine capacity, nor is there a bag limit on snow geese. So there you go. Um, as for me, I keep my shotguns pretty, 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 pretty vanilla, pretty simple. Um, this one, like I said, I need to get a, uh, a sling on this one. I've got the rear mount on here for it. I see to add the loop or the swivel also up on the front. So this is just the, the Maverick 88 SP special purpose. I think it might be seven plus one, eight plus one, somewhere around there. And I just have the side saddle on it, which you can easily tear off. It's a little hard to see it because it's all it's basically it's dark because the light and stuff. There we go. Um, just standard stock on the back. I, I know I need to take that sticker off my bad. Um, I thought about maybe putting a pistol grip uh, adapter on it, but I just like the standard feel of just a regular shotgun i mean i rich do you have a pistol grip set up on on any of your other shotguns at all yeah we have three shotguns in this house one's a ksg one's a vepper 12 and then the, the shockwave they all have pistol grips on them all right the shooting experience i don't know if i've ever shot one with a pistol grip before i just i just go just your standard style just stock and so on but well, um, 12's an ak shotgun so it, you know yeah yeah well yeah that's gonna be that's gonna be just like yeah yeah hold on i'll go grab that real quick all right cool uh let's see calaveras 32 special says how about a mossberg 590m with a 20 round magazine for geese that would be epic that would be awesome is that 20 rounds of three and a half inch magnum i'm kind of curious uh david ramirez says i had the same maverick you know that's a great it's a great little shotgun um i did have the h and r partner pump which is made by, I think, Eagle Arms out of China, or I, I think it was called Eagle Arms. I know that there's a different Eagle Arms now, but or Eagle Imports or something like that. Um, I, this is one of those $160, $175 Walmart shotguns. I had the shorter barrel version of it. I loved it, and that thing was built like a tank, and I put a lot of rounds through it, but I wanted something with a little bit higher capacity, so this one's got your standard barrel length. Uh, bad thing about these 88 SPs, there's no choke. You just have, what, an improved cylinder 
uh, choke on it, and that's it. Just part of the tube itself, you, you can't change out the chokes or anything like that. Um, but, you know, it's not really – I mean, you, it's kind of an all-purpose, all-around shotgun, but it's not really designed specifically for – for hunting per se, it's more for like a like a yeah. defense or offensive use. Here's All right, so what do you got there? This is the Vepper 12. Ah, uh, yeah. So it's a monster. <laughs> Good God, man. <laughs> oh wow. Is the break really necessary? I mean, I'm surprised yeah. the shot doesn't doesn't just take it out, you know? AKs do not look great without a break. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You need to put put a can on the end of it. Put a put a put a faux suppressor on the end of it on top of it. And one that makes it look like a tank barrel just makes it even better. <laughs> that's for that's for breaching, right? Yeah, you can actually peg somebody. You don't even have to step inside the doorway. No, no it's not sharp. It's not pointed. Oh, it's okay, like okay. Oh, all right, I got you. I got you. Yeah, I actually thought about having this cut down because tell me that doesn't look like a crink. <laughs> it's got the crink yeah. Stuff. Oh, you could definitely walk on there. It's you should, the man. Stuff. Yeah. They make that the ultimate truck gun yeah, vepper is what that is. So, yeah. thing is, you have you can't just do that yourself because the way the gas system on these works, you have to send it to somebody who knows what they're doing because they have to make sure they get that gas, the you know hole in the barrel and everything just lined up perfectly in the right size and everything. Because you get your gas port messed up on your barrel, you just make oh. this work going to work for anything. Say it, yeah, paperweight basically. Yeah. All right, what do we have here? Eagles have wings, not arms. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Bull Moose Guns has an old Stevens trench gun, 12 gauge for $2,000 right now if you're interested. Uh, Patriot in the Dark, I am, but but the funds again. Now, Mr. Trek Fan Dan says, any opinions on 350 Legend? Mr. Trek Fan Dan, if you're new to the podcast, uh, we, did an, we did talk about 350 Legend. If you just look up 350 Legend, Space Travis P11, or 350, Levin, 350 Legend, Space Caliber Corner, um, you'll be able to uh, check that episode out. We did go over all the ballistics of it and what guns are out there and so on. <clears throat> what else we got? Remington A70. What's that? So we were talking about Vortex Optics earlier. Yeah. So got on here. Got the Vortex Venom on here. Oh, cool. And that's held up well. It's had no trouble with it whatsoever. The recoil's no, it's been fine. Great but... for a shotgun. So. Well, you know, with the action on that, I'm sure the action on that, that style, that AK-style action is going to absorb a lot of the recoil. Oh, yeah. You know? DP12 for hunting gun. What do you guys think about that? DP12. That's what the Since Chinese we, thing of. Is that the one I'm thinking of? Or oh, is that oh the the double barreled pump shotgun? Oh, that thing. The DP12 mm -hmm. versus the KSG. I you know hey I'm I'm, I'm that's cool. It looks a lot like the KSG. Um, if you want a hunting shotgun in that style, you could always go with the KSG25. 25 yeah. rounds of buckshot or slugs and a 30-inch barrel that's smaller than a Mossberg 800. I mean, 500 with an 18-inch, 18 18.5-inch 18 barrel. I mean, come on. <laughs> Man, you run through, you run some slugs through that thing. Yeah, the DP12 looks like something out of Halo. That's a very cool gun. Uh, what was the price on those? Are those? Am I seeing that right there? Like $1,300 or something for a DP12? I hey, you know, if you can if you can use it for for hunting, you know. Uh, yeah, that barrel length though, I'm not sure what, what kind of a spread you're going to get out of that, especially if you can't adjust the choke tubes or anything along those lines. But yeah, if uh, you're in a state yeah. that doesn't have a magazine limit, size yeah. limit, you knock yourself exactly. out. <laughs> exactly. Cadillac Jack says, Good evening, Travis. Good evening, sir. How you doing? Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see if there's anything else to Travis. If you've ever been on radio, you have a radio voice. <clears throat> Why, thank you very much, David. I do appreciate that. No, I have not done radio. Um, I've done, um, Commercials for local radio here. Just they they actually had me uh, doing some commercials in Spanish a couple times, and then I do a great uh, fake uh, Eurovision announcer voice, Univision announcer voice, like on the Spanish speaking channels, just for fun. I kind of do that as a joke, but uh, yeah, no, I appreciate that, man. Thank you, thank you. Actually, the funny part is if you ever hear my father speaking, I sound exactly like him, which is kind of freaky. Because whenever I call my grandma. She doesn't know if it's me or my dad calling, which is kind of funny. Um, what do we have here? Two Gun Kitty Catnip Outlaw says, Have you tried the Armaspec Stealth Recoil Spring? Put in an AR 15 pistol build, almost no recoil with BG6 Gamma Break, also. No, I have not. That's something I should look into. Um, you know, I've got the 300 Blackout pistol kind of hiding underneath the gun channel's uh, logo over here. But, uh, Rich, what are you bringing up over there? What do you got? That, that's the KSG 25. Ah, okay, and that's got a single 25 round capacity magazine or what? It's got two mag tubes. It's got two 12 round mag tubes, just like the standard KSG has the two uh, mag tubes under the two seven rounders. This one has two 12 rounders where you can set it to five, the 
feed from both tubes or just one or you know so you could have one loaded with buckshot the other one loaded with slugs and there's a little switch like right back here where you where the feet where you feed in the eject is where you can switch from one tube to the other or have it where it's going to just cycle from one and then the other at the same so if you cycle it once it'll fire from say the right tube cycled again it'll fire from the left tube so you can alternate what you're firing or you can set it to where it's firing from just the right or the left tube. These are these are pump actions or are these semi-auto? They're, they're pump action. So you're relying on that vertical foregrip to to do all the work. Well, that's an add-on. It actually you yeah. have a, you have a standard like shotgun slide. It's right here. But is that Picatinny rail an add-on or is that already is that on that's there when you buy it? The rail's on, the rail is on there. Okay, that's gonna be a cheese grater, man. I'm telling you not, with your hand. Not really. It's a polymer no? rail, and you run oh. on the um. My, like I said, my son has the shorter one. You don't even realize it's there when you're working that action. Okay. How is the action? Is it fairly smooth on those guns? I've never fired one before. It wasn't that bad. For a yeah, bull yeah. Pup, for a bullpup, the trigger wasn't bad either. <clears throat> it's just, this thing recoils like a mule. I mean, yeah. it really, it when it kicks, it kicks. You know, you know you're know, you firing a 12-gauge when you're firing one of these things. Oh, yeah. Started. That's pretty cool, man. I How much are those? Um, this one I don't know offhand. Let's see what the does it say what the MSRP is? MSRP on this one's fourteen hundred. All right, four to thirty. I'll take two. So. Oh, we got a we got a request from Dave Ramirez. Uh, do the Spanish announcer voice. So so Rich, you got to do your Spanish announcer voice. Can you do that for us? Do you know yeah. any Spanish at all? I mean, do you know any Taco Bell? Do you? Yeah, yo quiero Taco Bell. Look at that. This guy's good. We should do a whole episode in Spanish. That's all you need to know. David, what about you? Or can you do this? Can you do the uh, Spanish uh, announcer voice at all, or not? Tango el gato los panelones. <laughs> Man, that's that's all you got to know, and then don't ask Albania, right? So, David, David that's Ramirez, just for you, <laughs> we'll do the we'll do the Spanish announcer voice. Esta noche que lo tenemos las armas para ustedes en Univision dot com. ¿Dónde es el supermercado? El supermercado está aquí a mi derecha. <laughs> and we're gonna start confusing all the fans that are watching it. <laughs> Uh, bye, folks. Got to run. Yoder bails. Man, we go into Spanish and Yoder just takes off. So I, I know how to ask where the meat store is, the milk store, and the supermarket. But if you tell me the answer, I won't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> so, Van <laughs> Vlog says, and as you know, uh, we will talk to you later. Okay, bye. Y como tú sabes, hablaremos después. Adios. Is that what you wanted to know, Vandal? If that's a situation I just told you, you can go back and watch that. So, all right. I'm charging by the hour for this, people. My 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 translating and interpretation stuff is not free, so. Uh, what do we have? We're looking for 1911 compact rubber grips with the silver EGA. Patreon, if you checked on eBay, man, there are a ton of 1911 grips over there on eBay. Um, what do we got? David Ramirez says high point nine millimeter or high point carbine nine millimeter just for range extra gun. David, buy both. You know, the mags are interchangeable. They're cheap enough. Um, man, I'm seeing the high point nine millimeter carbines for like 239 or 249 if you look around online. Uh, the pistols themselves. I would hold out. Um, I, I don't know if they're going to change the carbines anytime soon, but the new high points are supposed to be out, I believe, by the end of 2019. And they're going to be coming out with double stack mags. I want to say 15 or 16 round mags. Um, pre, They're, they're going to have suppressor ready barrels on them. Uh, and I don't know if the carbines are going to accept the double stack mags. I believe it's something with the actual grip panels excel, it, itself that allows the double stack mag. Because I'm pretty sure you can run the single stack mags also because of the way that they set it up. But the magazine well is going to have some space in it. Because I was watching when they were talking about the high points, what they had changed on it. Uh, let's see. Do a Tecate beer commercial voice. Uh, si me gusta tomar Tecate cerveza para ti. There you go, Patrick, just for you. Why don't we start translating stuff in Spanish tonight for everybody? Come on, guys. I am out of, I am out of school, so I don't have to do Spanish right now. <laughs> Tim Foley, you're a funny guy. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, would you guys go, would you get yourself a, uh, a high point nine millimeter carbine rich kingpin? What do you guys think? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I don't know. Rich, what do you think? Yeah, why not? <laughs> I, friend, speaking of what's that? My friend has got the 40 and yeah. I love it. And his wife's father has the nine and it's not as fun as the 40, but it's still a really nice gun. And the nine, you know, since there's very little price difference between them, I would go up in the caliber. I'd start with the forty, or go forty-five, or go go bigger, go on, go go to ten millimeter. You know. Yeah, it's a blast, and right out of the box, it shoots way better with the basic iron, like stock sights, iron sights, whatever you want to call them. 
than it did when we put a scope on it. And we even took the scope off, and my friend decided that that's the only problem with the high point is it doesn't usually come with an instruction manual. So he was having his I don't care about YouTube fit for a little while and decided <laughs> to take his gun apart without watching the video. Oh. So then he had to come to me to watch a bunch of videos and I would put it back together. And we were we have extra screws left and a piece or two sitting over here, and it's still accurate as can be. You know, um, that's the one bad thing about the carbines. There are some really good um, cleaning videos, like complete field strip disassembly videos on that. You need to watch them because it, it is a tricky gun to put back together. I had one of the Gen 1 carbines back in the, like, 01 or 0. No, I bought it back in the late 90s. I had a Gen 1. had the old stocks with them. Never took it apart and cleaned it because it's kind of a blowback style. So, I mean, it they can get a little nasty, but you can put so many rounds through them. But, yeah, taking them apart and cleaning them is a pain in the butt. Um and, you know, talking about accessorizing, they sell them with, with lasers on them. They sell them with a red dot on them with a scope on top of them. Now, Mr. Trek Fan Dan says, I may take a thrashing for this, but any chance Canik makes a 10 millimeter, I love my 9 millimeter. I don't believe that they do, but, you know, 10 millimeters kind of having a resurgence. There's a lot of guns that you're starting to find now. Uh, Mr. Trek Fan Dan, just go to like uh, gungenie.com or go to Davidson's and just look up, just type in pistol, semi automatic, 10 millimeter, and you'll have hundreds of choices that'll pop up for for 10 millimeter options for all the guns out there that that uh, like a place like davidson's carries in 10 millimeter uh what else do we have or what kind of gun pistol cases do you prefer all right i'll run this one through the panel so david what about you um what kind of pistol cases or gun cases do you have a certain brand you like to buy or do you just buy whatever's on sale at walmart or what for the pistol cases i generally like the ones that come with their own case which I'm a big Ruger fan, and Ruger likes to send you a cheap cardboard box. Yes, yes. That's right. one thing they could definitely work on, yeah. But uh, other than that, I don't have any pistol cases that didn't come with the guns that I have. And as far as rifle cases, I like the Flambeau or Flambeau or whatever it's mm -hmm. called, mm -hmm. and Plano. You know, uh, yeah. you can always... There's always a pawn shop or a gun store or whatever that's got Plano cases for sale for 15, 20 bucks because yeah. they can't get rid of them. <laughs> As Dan says, my guy, oh, Patriot the Dark says, uh, SS Pond, I prefer, I prefer ones that are full. So, by the way, uh, SS Pond, that's uh, one of the supporters of the channel. Uh, Stan over there is the one that provides me with firearms from his private collection for the channel and stuff. So, make sure you guys give SS Pond a call. Got to give him a little plug while we're at it. Uh, Rich, what about you? What brand of cases do you like to use? What's your preference? Um, uh, rifle cases, I just buy whatever's on they got at Walmart. <laughs> I'm not usually the, the Planos or plant Planos. Yeah. Planos are usually on sale, and then yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I got a nice uh, one that I picked up not that long ago when we were getting ready to go to Tulsa. Before we found out we weren't able to go to Tulsa, and it's a big two rifle, two long gun case. Mm -hmm. So, I, kind of like the one I have over here, like the zip up one, where you can put the two or three guns in and yeah, open up as a as a shooting yeah, press. No, no, this one's just a hard shell. Oh, okay. Okay. Foam on the inside, on both sides, on the inside. All right. All right. Yeah, I can fit in that one. I can fit my AR-15, which is this ten and a half inch pistol, my shockwave, and then I can actually fit like a couple of the pistols in there too, all at the same time. Oh, so, nice. But they, it gets to be kind of heavy when you do that, though. So yeah, usually I'll yeah. just put like. Like when we went the last time, I had the um, Mossberg and the KSG in there, and then just for my pistols, just about every pistol I have. Well, some of them anyway. Mm -hmm. How many ones I got over here? One, two, three, four. I have four pistols. Well, I have five pistols in four cases that came with the pistols. My HK yeah. came with the case. My CZ came with the case, and then I got two of my Smith and Wessons that came with the case. So they're just all in those hard cases. And what I don't like, it's like what he was saying with the Rugers, if you get a shield, doesn't matter which shield it is, they come in a cardboard box. Even the um, High Point, Ruger, Taurus. I don't, yeah. Taurus back in the day, they used to have hard cases back when they had like the 20, original 24-7 line. Those came in hard cases, but they went to their orange and white boxes like mm -hmm. probably probably six or seven years ago, I'm guessing, if not longer. Yeah, so my D2C uh, came in, so the orange and white Taurus box, which I, you know. Now, uh, David Ramirez here is saying that the Flambo AR case is 30 bucks on Amazon. That's not bad, especially if you got that, prime shipping on that. That might be a the one I have. It might be a Flambo. Yeah. Alba Hatfield says, Trav, what happened to your head? 
Nothing. I just shave my hair. I just shave my head. I shave it every two weeks. I can still grow out a full head of hair. I just choose not to. My head's fine. There's a massive brain up here I have to contain, dude. Come on, man. What happened to your head, Ellis? <laughs> um, let's see. As for me for cases, for pistol cases, most of them are hard cases that have come with the guns like you guys. And then I've just got a generic bulldog case that has the, the egg crate foam in it. And I can throw that in there with the magazines and take that out to the range if I want to. Um, I don't have just a generic hard case for pistols or either soft cases or ballistic nylon cases um, or the ones that come with the gun. Sometimes I'll grab one of those and throw another gun in it and take it. I'll take the Glock case and throw another gun in there when I go off to the range if I just want to protect it. Yeah. Um, well, the, the funny thing about the USP for a gun that costs almost $1,000, it comes with a hard case that doesn't have any foam inside of it. It's all molded plastic it's not one of the ones with the foam did, did uh max ate his what was it his mp5 that he bought himself or he mac bought himself military arms channel bought a really expensive h and k rifle i think he had some problems with their carbine or uh and it, it just came yeah. in like a cardboard box yeah it came in a cardboard box really it's like it's like an eighteen hundred dollar gun or two thousand dollar gun and it comes in a cardboard box i'm like seriously guys yeah. i mean i you just, just my I mean, HK box okay yeah so, yeah or they could just use a generic yeah. Then you open it, and that's what it is. Yeah. It's just molded plastic. I mean, we're, I know you're, oh, I know it's all about the bottom line, but come on, what do those things really cost manufacturing when it's all said and done? You know? A gun that costs almost $1,000 comes in this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, another case I'd like to try out is I know that Harbor Freight, they sell the imitation Pelican cases. And, you know, Pelican cases, Pelican cases are like, you know, $200 for the rifle cases and like $100 for the pistol cases. And they've got the egg crate foam in them. I think you can take sections out to make your gun fit. And they've got the, the hard shell around the outside and you can lock them up and they float and they've got a like a purge valve in them so they don't get overpressured and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I know Harbor Freight's got their own line that's about half the price of those. But I don't know if they carry the rifle ones. I know they've got the pistol ones in stock. Yeah. Just to compare, this is the CZ case. Okay. Yeah. That's foam, foam there, foam up here. Comes with a cleaning kit, you know. Does your CZ case have right where your uh, right here? Yeah, right you got that little tab. Yep. Yeah, that's what I like about it the best is if the class break, that little tab will still hold it closed. Mm -hmm. And it's you can store everything up your paperwork and everything for it. It's all stored right up here. It's got a nice little like pouch in the foam where you put that stupid little lock and everything oh cool all right yeah yeah cases were something i was hoping we could cover so uh ss ponda thank you for bringing that up because <laughs> I mean, you got so many different options for them and stuff i mean what's funny is you know you can look at one brand and they charge so much money for it you can look at another one that's very similar and it's like half the price you know yeah. but i i think there's a there's going to be some quality that's associated with price sometimes on some yeah, of those yeah. cases, you're going to pay for a little bit more. And if anybody wants a range report on this, this thing shoots very nicely. That's your P10C? Yeah, P10C with the, the suppressor ready on. In a uh, urban gray? Yep, the urban gray with the <laughs> That's freaking awesome. on magazine. Yeah, yeah. The one problem that you will come across with like the Plano cases is if your scope is mounted too high, yeah. it's not going to fit. And yeah. then... My friend's got the uh, Remington 500 or 700. I can't remember which one it is. It's the 308. And it took him it took him about a month to finally track down a case big enough to fit it in a hard case. Yeah, the, the funny thing about this, too, we, I, I was doing limp wrist drills with it to see if I get mm -hmm. it malfunction. I was accidentally double tapping it when limp wristing it because the trigger's so light. It on would, it. like, flop back down under your finger and set itself yeah. off again, you know? Yeah. I want to watch that. That's like a that's like a natural binary triggers. <laughs> yeah, if you practice enough, you probably could do um, uh, you know, bump fire it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The trigger is light on this thing. I didn't do. I didn't get any video because the indoor range is just too loud. Because we, there was a bachelor party that was there when we were there, and they oh, were doing full <laughs> auto rentals. <laughs> you couldn't hear the person standing right next to you. Hey, a uh, quick plug here for Rob D. New York Outcast. He did a review of the uh, Harbor Freight gun cases. Uh, Apache is the brand at Harbor Freight. So check, check out Rob D. New York's channel, and you guys can check out the reviews on that. Um, Cal Bear says, my father-in-law has Sever rifle and Sever pistol. <coughs> is that Sever a brand, or are you saying several? Um, I wasn't Sever? Sever? 
you know, I don't honestly, I'm just like a lot of the other people. I just buy whatever's on sale at Walmart that's going to fit the gun. But again, like uh, David Boeing had said with those Plano cases, yeah, if you've got a tall optic on it, you can't take it off and put it back on easily, which you could risk losing zero. Um, you won't be able to fit your, fit your firearm in there because the Plano cases are real narrow. They were great for certain long gun applications, but not so much for uh, for your ARs. You can get a lot of AR tactical cases that kind of have like a taco shape, so you can put it in there with the scope and you know, if it's condensed down, your 16-inch carbine will fit in there with no issues whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, while well, we're still on cases, I do want to mention, I like the way the Smith & Wesson does the MMP cases more than the CZ one. Because if you notice, CZ over here had where all your grips were all stacked up on top of each other. Your different oh, grips. yeah, so yeah. This one, they lay them out. That's nice. Yeah, because even Glock takes all six of them and they wedge them in the bottom of the... Yeah, I think like most all. people, once you take all the Glock stuff out, you really can never get it to go back in the box. Yeah, you almost need to take a photo of it before you do that. Yeah, I have the yeah. medium one on here, which is the one that came on it. And it just, I like the way it feels. And it's then my wife shoots this too. So oh, it's like okay. it fits both our hands. The, uh, uh, the, the SD9VE is coming to cardboard box too. So if you go get a Smith & Wesson SD9VE, that's another way that they cut back on the cost for those. Because they just give you a, just a paper box also, a cardboard box. Well, it's nice. This is the compact, the 2.0 compact. But it comes with little adapters. So if you want to use the full-size magazines, you can. Yeah. Just like the, they're basically like just like the Shield magazine only size. Like hmm. Double stack magazine. Oh, cool. Um, Patriot the Dark says you're not using the cases at storage, are you? Do you don't you have issues with corrosion? No, Patriot the Dark, I don't. I don't ever store my firearms in a case unless um, I'm going on a trip or something, and they're going to sit for a few days. Otherwise, even in my own um, gun safes and gun lockers, I keep the little packets of silica gel to keep the humidity moderated in them. So David's showing off his. What do you got there, David? That's the shield with the extended little furniture on the magazine. Oh, okay, okay. That is nice. Yeah. Those yeah. Those adapters, they fit just like that does on there. You put that on your full-size magazine, and it makes it where you don't have a gap. Now, I went back, and I watched Roll Call's video on the uh, TH9C, and he was talking about how those adapters have a tendency to slide on the magazines. you got to think about that. If you're carrying it as a spare, is that going to slide down over long-term carrying or not, that little adapter? Does it does it lock, David, into the, butt, into the base plate on the magazine or not? No, it doesn't lock in, but... Yeah. You'd have to, it yeah, fits perfect. so well that yeah. you try to kind of walk it off. You, it's not just going to fall off. No, if, it's, if it's snagging, it hit a pretty hefty snag to, to cause you any actual trouble. Okay. Yeah, those, the, those, the 9C ones slide. Uh, What's that? Yeah, those, those, the ones on the shield, the magazines, I have the same shield that he has up, upstairs, but it, um, it, they, they, they're very snug. They, they grip that magazine. They don't move. Mm. Well, you really got to be, you got to really put some pressure on there for that to move. Yeah. So we talked about shotguns and we did talk about ARs a little bit. And yeah, for accessories on ARs with me, you know, I, I guess you can call furniture an accessory. I've got the SBA three on the 300 blackout pistol behind me. Um, I do have like one of those bad levers on the 224 Valkyrie. Mainly so when I put a mag in, I have to sit there and push the paddle and risk having to come out of zero. I can just push, push a little button down and that'll drop the bolt. But it's not actually made by Magpul. It's kind of the bad lever where it goes on your bolt hold up, your bolt catch, uh, your little paddle on the side. There are bolts on the side of it. And it's got a little wire that goes underneath of it. You just press it down and it'll drop the bolt for you when you uh, have already seated your magazine. So that's really all I put on mine. And I keep them real simple. Like on my, my, my basic 16-inch carbine, I've just got a, a tactical light on the front that's not very high power. It's more for like a quick scan. It's not for blinding anybody that's coming at you. I probably should have a better light on the front of the uh, on the home defense AR. Uh, that, and then I just got the flip up sights and um, ambidextrous charging handle, which we were talking about the ambidextrous charging handles. And I don't know if I've got one on this or not. Yeah, I do have one on this. Okay, so this is my PSA 16 inch mid link. I'm going to lock this on me for a little bit. Um, ambidextrous charging handles. Is that Abby? No, it's not Abby. I do have an extended lever on here. And this was actually sent to me by another YouTuber, and I put this on just a standard charging handle. Um, these are nice. They're very convenient. They make it easy to, to work. But I was talking to Dead Horse and a few other guys after after one of the chats, 
And you got to watch out for that because that, you know, in a combat situation or an SHTF situation, that can get caught on any kind of extra harnesses or straps that you've got on you or body armor. So you really want to watch out when you get crazy because some of these ambi, ambi charging handles, man, they come way the heck out there. And, you know, you might need some, you might be somebody that needs that for that extra grip or that extra purchase um, in order for you to properly charge the firearm. If you do disability, we can, whatever, I understand it, but. Do you understand if you carry this thing in like a one piece mount over, you know, over the front of you, that could get caught on a lot of things. So it almost has me wanting to take these back to just the standard charging handles. And I've got one of the, what the Bravo company VTORs that they paid like $90 for. And I love that thing. But when you look at it, it's like, man, that thing is wider than the rifle itself. So if you do accessorize, you got to kind of think, how's that going to affect, you know, also if you go with furniture, you might want to go M lock because you can then add your accessories if you want to. Uh, where you just put your M-Lock mounts on it with your Picatinny sections, and you can put your foregrips on there. You can put your lights on there. You can do whatever you want to do, and uh, that makes it a lot easier for you. Let's see if we have any questions going on over here. Uh, let's see. IMHO, the shield slide lock concept sucks. I modified my wife's to a slide release. Yeah, some of the some of the slide stops, it's almost as if they never intended for you to push down on them. That's kind of the same way that I feel about my Ruger EC9S. It has a very slim, very tight slide stop where you can push it, but it's it's very hard to manipulate. Let's see if we have anything else. I'll say one thing real quick while you're reading yeah. the chat yeah. about going back to the high point carbines. Yeah, 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 yeah. The charging handle has got a wheel type of on it, so it spins around. Yeah. And we're constantly screwing that back on. Now, we're lazy. We don't care enough to put Loctite on it, but <laughs> be aware – yeah. If you if you do buy a high point carbine, that is one of the things that that will give you issues. Is the the chart the handle on the charging handle will come unscrewed. Uh, two things about the high point carbine: you can get aftermarket bolts, which you'll probably still need some thread locker, but they make some nice anodized charging handles for that. Um, that are a little bit easier to use, a little bit easier to manipulate. They're not much bigger than what you are that what already comes on it. They're probably fifteen or twenty bucks on eBay. And then there is actually, if you don't like that stock, if you think it's a little too tacked out for you, the the new gen uh, high point carbine stock um, ATI makes a Breda CX four or what is it? The the Breda carbine? Is it called CX four? I can't remember. The Breda CX carbines. They make a stock that's basically a replica of the Breda stock, and you drop your high point internals into that, and you've got something that's not quite so tactical. It's a little more functional than anything. It's a lot more sleek, and that's a $100 add-on. So if you want to talk about accessorizing your high point carbine, that's the way to go. Now, I don't know what calibers it's compatible with, if it works with all of them or just for the 9 millimeter. Um, there's also a company, I think it's like Hightower Arms or Hightower. Um, they make a bullpup kit for your high point carbine, which is like – $200 maybe, something like that, but it turns your carbine into a bullpup. It looks really cool. It kind of looks like something from Halo. And uh, that's pretty sweet. There's a six to eight week wait on those things. So you can talk all the smack you want about them, but the, that company's had a two month back order on those uh, those bullpup kits for the high point carbines for, for, for years. I've been looking at them ever since they came out thinking, man, that'd be cool to put on the gun because they've got all sorts of different colors you can go with. You can go with white or OD green or black or whatnot. The uh, I think it's High Tower Armory is what they're called. Uh, let me just bring that up real quick, and we'll just show it to you here. And they are definitely cool. I would say it's probably the ultimate accessory add-on for your uh, high point. Oh yeah, they make the um, the PS ninety look for your ten twenty twos. Let me go into a screen share for you guys here real quick, and you can check this out. All right, so this is what we have. They make uh, like a PS ninety style or P ninety style. For, they're pretty expensive, two hundred seventy dollars. Those ship in twenty four hours, but the ones that they make for the high point carbine, those are the ones that are on back order. Those are two forty nine. The uh, it's called the MBS ninety five. I'll choose a different color so you guys can see better. They got an Arctic gray. They have uh, white. There you go. And that's what it looks like. It looks like the the laser tag rifle from back in the eighties. You guys ever played laser tag when you were kids? It almost looks almost the same, same kind of style and stuff. But it, it really is a cool, cool add for your, your carbine. Now, a lot of you might say, well, that's unnecessary. I'm assuming it uses the standard high point mags. I'm not 100% sure. It looks like it's that's one that's sticking out of there. It's the, you know, your, your blowback action from your carbine is also in there, too. There's your OD green. These guys have a six to eight week wait on those. So if you want one, and here you are spending $249, you are spending basically more or just as much 
as you did on the carbine when you bought it itself. Says it is compatible in 380, 9mm, 40, 45, and 10mm auto. So that with the uh, 10 millimeter would be really, really sweet. But you're also looking at five to six hundred dollars you're going to invest in it when it's all said or done, said and done. So that's something to uh, to consider too. Let me turn off the screen share here. There we go. So that's on that. I would consider that the ultimate accessory for your high point carbine. Um, you can go back and buy the earlier gen stock, which looks really cool for those carbines. Um, it does take off all the Picatinny rails and stuff like that. I don't think there's anything you can even mount on except maybe a, a sling, and that's pretty much about it. So let's talk about let's talk about slings for a second here because I've got a brand I want to recommend to everybody. What works for you guys for slings? Do you guys have a certain brand that you like to go for for any of your firearms? Is there anything that works for you guys? What do you guys use? Um, on my AR, I just have a Bungie sling that I bought on Amazon and then – here, I have a um, paracord sling on the shockwave that um, spring is listed. So, um, yeah, it's a firefield paracord that I picked up at Dunham Sports. Actually, pretty nice sling for what I paid for. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a bunch of David. friends, yeah, that uh have given me a bunch of slings and swivels and stuff like that, but. I just haven't gotten around to integrating them into any of my rifles. Uh, I, I get pretty distracted, and shortly after I got a bunch of cool rifles, I started buying a bunch of cool handguns. So <laughs> I've been more focused on handguns lately than rifles. Yeah. Well, so don't really forget, don't... you got to go get your sling loops and stuff. You got to go buy those every time you go to Walmart. You got to pick up a set of those to put on the gun, unless it comes with them. You know. Well, that's what I'm saying. The guys at my range, every other week, somebody's got a bag full of that kind of stuff that they give me. Man, you know, that's what you need right there. Uh, see, Tim Foley says Nikon has a lifetime warranty for the first owner. Okay, there we go. By the way, I don't remember who asked, but when it came up to the Gen X or Canix, whichever one you want to call it, oh, 10 millimeter, yeah, they only have the nine millimeters listed on their website now. They used to have four, uh, 40, but mm -hmm. they don't even have that listed on their site anymore. Now they just have the nine millimeters, so. I, I don't know if they'd, if they'd ever add one. A lot of it kind of depends on the company themselves because they are, you know, they're a supplier for the Turkish military. So if they're not making that round and with them being a NATO ally, they'll probably just stick with nine millimeter, you know, for the most part. Now, if you are looking, we had looked at 10 millimeters before, um, least expensive options, you know. Um, oh, help me out. Who does the who does the GI 1911? I'm totally drawing a blank here, guys. Based out of the Philippines. Rock oh, Island. God. Rock Island that's makes a nice Island kind of tactical style yeah. 10 millimeter that's like 500 bucks or 525 or something. So, all right. And uh, joining me here is my uncle Ellis. Ellis, what's going on, man? How you doing? I can't hey, see the man. family resemblance. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look. Yeah, yeah. We, we look like long lost. Seriously, things. I'm not kidding, man. We might have the same mom. So, um, so Ellis, why don't you join in? Let's talk about some accessories real quick. When you accessorize or dress up your guns, man, is there something that you just go to every time you buy a gun, something you have to do to it every time or not? Is there anything that comes to mind? Like any certain brand of, of like an optic or a sling or sights or anything like that? Are you just, are you kind of a Magpul fan at all or not? Not really. Um, I like certain brands, of course. I, I love primary arms optics. Oh, yeah, yeah, those, yeah. Those things are absolutely amazing. Hollow Sun makes good stuff. Um, yes, as far as slings go, slings are a big deal, guys, but you don't have to spend $90 on a sling. I mean, that's yeah. just, you know, Blue Force gear is great, but Magpul stuff's just as good, you know. Okay, okay. You know, a lot cheaper. Uh, it's, it's and they just do stand behind their warranty, too. Magpul's got a great warranty on their products. I think they're basically lifetime on everything. If you call them up with a problem, they do replace it, um, as I've discovered myself. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to me personally accessorizing, I got, I'm a minimalist. I really am. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, you know, I always put iron sights on them, some kind of optic and a sling, and I'll leave it at that. Yeah. I do not, I do not go crazy with flashlights, lasers, all this other stuff. I just don't see a need for it in my situation. Somebody else out there might have a different situation, you know? Oh, yeah. You know, you're talking about slings real quick. I got a, I've got a uh, super chat going on over here, and Deceive Toast says I like redhead leather slings for lever guns. Yeah, the redhead brand is the Bass Pro Shops Cabela's brand. 
Um, I've never tried their slings before, but I'm sure it looks pretty cool. I had a company send me one of their Buffalo hide slings that I put on my, my, um, uh, let's see, 830, what the hell was it? That was my Marlin CS. Yeah. My 336 CS. Um, and it looks really nice when you put that on there. So yeah. So the, the redhead leather slings, uh, does he toes, can you pop a price in there? What do those tend to run? I'm kind of curious. I've never looked at them. Our Cabela's is just starting to get redhead stuff in stock right now from Bass Pro Shops. So, by the way, um, Ellis, they have a new name for you. They're going to call you Travis Hatfield, okay? Travis Hatfield is your new name, Outlaw, just so you know. Uh, the funny thing about that, that sounds like a country western singer, so I don't know what the deal is with that. <laughs> LSP11 has got a nice ring to it. LSP11, Travis Travis Hatfield and the P11 crew, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you need a light at least. Sketchy Roll says you need a light at least. Yeah, that's one thing that I kind of need to keep more of those around for the I mean, I've only got the – really, my, my true defensive weapon in terms of going beyond a pistol is probably going to be my 300 blackout pistol. Well, I guess you can call that a pistol anyway, but a handgun um, going to the 300 blackout pistol. So I should put something on there. Um, I know paracord slings are really cool. Um, if I got a preference for slings overall, if I could recommend one, I know a lot of guys want to go single point and they want to go all tactical, and that's cool. You can do that. I've always had awesome luck with these guys. This is a Butler Creek. These are like $10 at Walmart. They're neoprene. And what's nice about these is they they don't necessarily they, they stretch a little okay but not so much that they get bouncy they do a fantastic job with weight bearing so if you're going to be out walking any long distances this thing right here it's not going to cut into your shoulder it's going to make your gun feel a lot lighter because it takes off some of that uh, that weight for you and this is something you can sling it over your back or sling it over your shoulder and carry it all day it is amazing it's got some grippy uh, coating on the back of it also. And that does a really good job for keeping it from sliding on you when you're moving around and stuff. So Butler Creek, man, for 10 bucks at Walmart, 10 or $11, they are awesome. I've got them on everything basically that has a uh, sling mount on it in my, in, my, in my gun collection. So, yeah, those are awesome. Hey, joining us, we've got uh, Night Strike. You've got a fantastic root beard going on there, Night Strike. Look at that oh, thing. No. Look at that. My God. You can put a family of squirrels in that thing, dude. That is awesome. And and I've got a upper third now too. I want to just let this go and I want that. I want that. That's it. You got your own camouflage, dude. That is freaking <laughs> awesome. That is freaking awesome. It's, All right, so it's nice rough right. to maintain. Now that you're here, man, how you feeling? Are you feeling okay? Yeah, it's just allergies. I had to wait for the Zyrtec to take effect because I've been having allergies all day. All right. So. Deceive Toast, you didn't have to do another, another super chat. He goes, and, around 60-ish for regular sling and 70 to 80-ish for and, padded. All right, all right. Travis, cool, man. Yeah. If, if you have a rifle, there's one accessory you have to have. And it's the bayonet. Gotta, it, you got to have the bayonet. The bayonet. So, Since I got a mid link gas system here, I can do that. Um, I don't that's think I can do it on the accessory. carbine. What's that? That's, that's my favorite accessory, the bayonet. That's that's I am lacking one. I am definitely. You know what? What's funny about that is speaking of the bayonets, we were we were doing a like it like an AR accessories countdown or something on Match Chat a long time ago, and I said I would want a bayonet on my home defense carbine, and everybody laughed at me. I got laughed out of the panel, and I'm like, well, think about it. You got you need to make that weapon as deadly and as effective as possible to defend your family. That gun has any kind of a malfunction at all? Why wouldn't you reason, want every the advantage? Why they laughed at you is because yeah. you bought an AR, okay? Yeah, yeah. You should already have a bayonet for no, it. No, no, no. They're saying, dude, that is way unnecessary. You don't need a bayonet on there. I'm like, yeah, you would. If you got to go poke something, I mean, come on, man. Why wouldn't you want that on there? I mean, you're already carrying the rifle, right? If, you, if, if, if there's a zombie apocalypse and you run out of ammo, a bayonet is going to be really useful. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm you telling you, man, why, that's – yeah. Do you know why Night Strike always hollers bayonet? Have you seen him shoot? <laughs> <laughs> well, when he runs at you with that thing full speed, he ain't going to miss because he's got that Night Strike hey, reach, man. He's got I, I, extra – I've proven on camera that I can use the bayonet properly. Yes, he you can. have. Yes, you have. But if he's shooting at something, as long as you're standing right in front of him, you're safe. Right. The same thing with your hand, with your revolver, Ellis. Yep. There you go. He was uh, Mr. Trent, ten feet away. Was couldn't hit the paper. <sighs> all right, all right. We 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 know we know the story. We'll quit. We'll quit harassing you, um, Mr. Trek Fan Dan says I was 
wishful thinking about the 10 millimeter canic which doesn't exist right the uh tang foglio italian made they have great reviews and some pistols have interchangeable uppers and mags using the same lower the same frame yeah i my one of my earliest my second pistol that i bought back in the day back in the late 90s was an ea witness p a polymer ea witness european american armory which was made um by or in tang foglio italy and uh, that thing was great. I think they're they're all basically kind of a CZ seventy five variant, if you will. And yeah, uh, got her broken in, and she was good to go. So yeah, I would. I think EAA makes really nice guns. Personally, I mean, I've only got experience with one, but they've been around for a long time, and they make target models and stuff like that. So, what do we got there, Ellis? What are we looking at? That was today, guys. I Dang. can't. I can't shoot at all. No, you can't. You even tagged the ear, dude. <laughs> um so question for you what were you shooting is that a 22 lr no no that was a, a 7.62 by 39 ar sweet yeah, did you get that ridiculous six scope on that no nope, well, yeah no, the optics the optics make it easy man that that was the primary arms acss oh okay that's the primary arm sorry Okay, now we got to move on to. We've talked about the ARs, we've talked about the shotguns. We still need to try to get through AKs and long rifles before we run out of here in terms of accessories. So, get your AKs, grab your AKs. All right, moving on. I'm not oh going that far. God, this thing gets heavier as I get older. Okay, so what kind of modifications do we need to make to the AK 47? Is it perfect right out of the box with a simple wood furniture, no vertical floor grip? What do you guys there, think? There's one, Travis. If you got an AK and you don't have a side ma a side rail, go and get the AK master mount so you have a side rail. I don't on this one. I've got the irons on it, but I also have the um, uh, Picatinny rail up in the front. So I, I can do one. a scout scope if I want to, or I can I've just got, put a regular I've red dot on there. I've got a master mount back order because I'm going to put that on my AK because it does not have a rail either. Yeah, those those are nice, those AK master mounts. Okay, they what do they mount to? What do they actually hook on to? What do they, okay, what do they, they replace your uh, pins. They replace the fire oh. pole. And you you don't oh, need wow. shepherd the shepherd's hook anymore. Oh okay yeah. okay. Oh, that's actually pretty cool, man. How much do those cost? They're about ninety bucks. Okay, so you get okay. that, then you got to get yourself the right. You got to get yourself a proper um, a proper scope. Not for but, the scope. I but, I don't know about you guys. I I've, I've read a lot a, about them. If, um, if you get a master mount, you can use even if you can get a hold of a surplus Soviet scope or optics, you can even use those too. I was so, going to say RS Regulate, man. I think their stuff is top quality, but that's I just mean, me. That, that too. But yeah. the fact is, you know, if you have an AK and you don't have a side rail, you need to get the uh, the master mount so you can use it. Okay. Because otherwise, it's going to be a pain in the ass. I've seen people use the top cover replacement that has this that has the rail on, has a Picatinny rail on it. It never holds zero. Okay. Don't ever use those. No, I've seen them before. I think maybe with like a red dot or something, that'd be the no, only way to do it. I, if you're I've seen people do stuff with the with the uh, the upper hand guards, and you got if you can do it right, that might be all right. But I wouldn't recommend it. I would yeah. I would seriously recommend just getting us getting the AK master mount, putting it on the yeah. side if you don't have a side rail, and then just getting you know the ones that use the uh, an optic that use the mounts with the side rail because that's the best uh, that's the best way you're going to get a decent optic. On your AK. Or if you've got the iceberg, just learn how to shoot with the iron sights and just go home happy. <laughs> uh, I, I shoot, I shoot about with the iron sights, but my accuracy is hit or miss to nice that claw. Oh, I know. <laughs> um, just a little thing on this one. This is just an AMD 63 that's the James River Armory package. I just put the VFG on there, but it came with a uh, little quad rail on the front, which I really like because I can put a dot side up on the front of it, which is cool. Uh, Phoenix Technology stock, which has storage in it. Yes, I've got an actual little spare sock with extra ammo on it. Why not? Why not? And then the uh, Phoenix Technology Grip, which is okay. I'm probably going to swap it out and put a Magpul one on there. It's very comfortable to hold on to. It does fit the hand really well. And it's got a nice sticky grip to it, so it does stay where it's supposed to. But, uh, yeah, I mean, for accessorizing, I mean, just a basic washer right out of the box, man. Just get yourself a, a, a sling and you're basically good to go, you know. And, again, me, I just got a Butler Creek on this one also. I just don't go tactical. I want something I can throw over my shoulders. I want something I can cross over and walk if I want to. And, uh, you know, if you proper, learn how to properly use a sling, uh, you can not use it to enhance your accuracy also. So that's something to keep in consideration. Um, accessories, muzzle brakes. You know, I've got the slant brake on my AK. What do you guys have for, for muzzle brakes on your AKs? Uh, 
Oh, the only one I got is the shotgun I just showed you. Oh so. uh, yeah, now that thing's got the freaking amazing brake no, on I, it. I, I've, I've got this. I've got a Tapco USA US made yeah. uh, slant brake. You know, which is just exactly like the the Russian one that comes with the original rifle. Yeah, I, that's me too. I got the same one on that. I think they're right. like twelve bucks or fifteen bucks or something like that. They're not too expensive. Right. Yeah, I yeah. Think the first accessory that I'm gonna get for my AK it is an AK. <laughs> so, so you're gonna get another AK yeah. to mount underneath it? Well, that will be my second accessory. I'd have to get the first AK in order to mount the second AK on top of it. Right, and w w what kind of adapter are you gonna use to hold them together? Oh, I use this fancy stuff called uh, duct tape and pipe cleaners. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, you guys laugh. I mean, you, there's actually mounts to where you could put a shotgun on the bottom of an AR-15. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not laughing. I, I've seen those. That's why I asked. That's See, awesome. Now, what you want to do is get the mag pool kit for the AK, and then mount an AR-15 to the AK. You get the best of both of them. Just don't or, mix up the ammo. Just don't mix up the ammo. Just do what Ellis did <laughs> and just get an AR in 762 by 39. Now, Ellis, did you go PSA? That's a stupid question, or did you go with a competitor, like a different brand? Or if you don't want to answer that question, I understand yeah, completely. A, that's a Wyndham. Oh, Wyndham? Okay, okay. Because I've seen, you know, there's a lot of companies that got the 762 by 39 uppers now, and they're not that expensive, so. That is a Wyndham weaponry, and I absolutely love that rifle. Okay. Sounds like. Uh, what do you use for magazines with that? Because you've got to go with a certain style. You know that. What what brand or what supplier do you go with? I use there's some, product defense. So and they're I just a standard use, GI style, right? Just your standard, you know, yeah. slab sided it's aluminum. Not, it's the only magazines I have found so far that it will feed reliably. Okay. Okay. Um, real quick here, guys. I got a Rich. I got a question for you. Netflitter wants to know, do you know of a vertical foregrip for the shockwave? Now, they're not the saying they're going to put it on there, but if somebody was going to, whatever, for whatever reason, and I'm all for it, but what uh, what, what can you do? Um, the shockwave will take just about any furniture that fits a 500 or a 590. So, you know, there's options. Probably like a quad rail style. It's not going to be quad, obviously, yeah. but like, a, like a, a, some sort of a, a vertical foregrip that might have a section of Picatinny in the polymer itself. Or, right. You know, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Netflitter, there's an answer for you. Yeah, the only thing that won't work is, like, the flex, and it would have to be one of the one, the flex stuff that Mossberg makes won't fit the shockwave, and the furniture has to be made for the newer style, dual, rep, dual, dual um, you know. Extractors? Yeah, no, not the dual extractors. The, no. The, um, I can't think of the name of them now. You know, the parts that work that on the slide to make the action work, Yes, yes, that. yes. The little it has, arms. Yeah, it has to have the dual arms, and it has to, you know, make sure, you got to make sure it fits. Okay. But, yeah, just about any modern Mossberg 500 or 590 furniture will fit it. So there are options where you can get the four ends that do have rails where you can put it, like, uh, you would probably have to go with a slant, an angled foregrip. I don't know if it would, I don't know the legality of putting an actual, um, if they cool. wanted to do something to it, to SBR it, or what? You, not SBR, but you see what I'm saying? That they want to like, yeah, I don't know SBS. Have, I don't know if you which is a bunch of BS, but yeah, yeah, I don't know if you would need the five dollar tax stamp for that or not. To be honest with you, because it's categorized as a firearm, not a pistol, so I don't know if you would need that five dollar tax stamp or not. I can't give you any legal advice on it, but there are options out there that if you want to try it, you could. Yeah, I don't think yeah. any of us on the panel are lawyers at this point. Remember, so. remember to <laughs> forward all legal advice to Black Cat Outdoors Esquire Cat Attorney at Law. Or the Yankee Marshal at gmail.com. Exactly. Okay, so nice strike. Uh, bring that. Okay, let's check out that, that lower again. So you are accessorizing your AR-15 lower. Why don't you kind of run yeah, us through yeah. what you've done so far? Yeah, a, a, friend, a friend of mine, uh, a good friend of mine, who I'm going to upload a video tonight of uh, – just sent me this awesome pistol grip and uh, ambidextrous safety. There you go. Now, there's also some more parts coming your way. You've got the paddle release coming to you. What else? What else did we send you? 
the paddle's coming. And then what else did you ask for? Oh, the charging handle. Charging handle. Yeah, you got my you got my last regular charging handle. I want that back. <laughs> Here, I'll trade it for one of these. After you and you and Dead Horse were telling me that, man, you don't want to run those big ambi handles because they snag. Now I want mine back. So, um, uh, I, you know what? I I, I need I need a. I'll probably get the lever for the for the charging handle so I can make okay. an ambi. But because uh, really, you can buy the lever for like two or three dollars off of eBay. All you do is just knock the pin out and just put the different lever on. And there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, question for Rich again, man. You're just getting hammered with the questions tonight. Tim Foley wants to know how is the reliability of the Vepper. Rich, is there anything you don't recommend running through, and anything you've run into that's caused any issues or anything along I those have, lines? I haven't had any issues with mine, but there are certain I've seen where some people have had issues with low brass bird shot in them. So if you're going to run bird shot, make sure it's going to be the higher brass style bird shot and not the low brass. I mean, I can run. I've run low brass than mine without an issue. But again, I have seen where some people have had problems with. Low brass, but as far as buckshot or slugs, this will run it. Anything yeah. that comes to that, and you can't run the minis through this either. Like your Gila mini shells, were, uh, okay, it won't work in the magazine. Don't they make an adapter for it? No, there's no adapter for them. Oh, I thought maybe there was one that was out there for the shockwave. Oh, for the shockwave, there is the shockwave. Oh, no, we're talking Vepper. Yeah, for the Vepper, no, no, yeah, no, yeah. the Vepper, no, because that uses you know it's attachable box magazines, so. There's no adapter for those, and they won't run in the magazine, so don't bother trying to even use those with it. Uh, what about just regular slugs in general? No problems at all? No, no problem at all, and it'll take uh, two and a half or three-inch shells. Oh, wow. Okay. Two and three-quarter, okay. rather, or three-inch shells. Sweet. So, yeah. All right. Let's uh, move on to our next firearm. We really haven't talked about accessorizing pistol yet, but uh, <laughs> long guns, your rifles, your bolt-action rifles, or semi-automatic, your longer rifles. What do you guys do to accessorize those? What works for you guys? Anything in general? I'm still working on a bolt action rifle right now. All right. Well, if you're going to get one, my recommendation is to no, go with I, I said I said I'm still working on it. It's still not working properly. Ah, you're still working on it. Okay. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Because uh, it's it's an old Stevens Model 83, and the problem is I'm having problems finding some of the parts, replacement parts, because it's so old. Okay, you've gone through like numerous gun parts and those other places looking for something. Yeah, they've got they've got all the other parts that I have that still work, and the one part I'm looking for is the barrel stud, so I can replace the barrel stud to actually get it to seat properly into the stock. Mm -hmm. So, gotcha. Um, only thing I've been kind of curious about adding to my bolt action, which is the the Ruger American Ruger Ranch and seven sixty two by thirty nine. Um, I'd like I'd like to get one of those like bubble levels. I'm kind of curious how well those work. I know Vortex makes them. You put them on your site when you first get it leveled out. And you get uh, a bigger magazine. What's that? Yeah, this is your mini you thirty. This is the twenty rounder. Uh, they go five, ten, or twenty. Uh, so you need more you than that. You need a thirty rounder. <laughs> I wish this would take the thirty round mags. No, I've got the uh, SKS Sporter behind me in the in the gun locker here, and that does take the AK forty seven magazines. That one is actually that was designed for them. So I've got that. That's like a rocks, man. Um, but yeah, man, if you're gonna get one rifle, I mean, in my opinion, this is the way to go. Nothing against like the 223 or the 243 or 270, but just the cost per round, it is so absolutely cheap to shoot. Um, I haven't done anything to this at all. I mean, it is threaded. I could put a suppressor on there if I wanted to. Um, I've just got a couple magazines for magazines are kind of an issue. They're a little pricey. They're about 35 bucks a pop. Um, again, I've just got the regular, just the Butler Creek um, sling on here. And I just got the sleeve on the back of it. Now, the rounds that I have been shooting through it are the uh, Hornaday, I don't know, I can't remember what the SF, what the heck are these tips called again? I'm just not drawing a blank right now. Um, these tip. are, yeah, the Palmer tip that they make, these are awesome. These are 50 rounds for $22 at Cabela's, which is not bad for a hunting grade 762 by 39. And they do come steel case from the factory. So and this is designed to run steel case rounds. It's not going to have any issues with extraction and so on. So you can run brass and steel case through these things. Only complaint about these rifles, I wish they were a little bit cheaper because they are up in the $400 range, which gets a little bit pricey, but you do get um, hammer forged barrel. It does come with the uh, just the five-round mag right out of the box. Um, but, man, this this is – I love this gun. If I was only going to have one gun, you know, and it could not be a semi-automatic, this would definitely be the way to go. Uh, this sucker's just – I've shot the hell out of this thing, and it's just – every time I go, 
I'll put 100 rounds through it, 200 rounds through it. And it's just a bolt action. But, you know, you get that kind of that high power ability without having to break the bank, which is really cool. And then I just got a cheat. It, it, it has sort of a standard Picatinny rail up on the top. It kind of has its own spacing, but you can put your 1913 Picatinny accessories up on the top, whether you want to put a red dot on there or magnified scope. This is just a three to nine by 40, if I'm not mistaken. I have yet to zero this. I need to take it out and get it zeroed in because this is a different scope now. Um, but man, this is just, butt pads a little, a little bit flimsy. I wish it was a little bit more firm, but man, it does an amazing job at absorbing the recoil. That, and that, Magpul, you get that side saddle from uh, Walmart? This is just, yeah, this, no, Hunter's Specialties. These were on clearance for a dollar at Tractor Supply Company. So I oh, bought a bunch of them. Okay. Yeah, I just got a bunch of them. I bought like five or six of them. I bought all they had in stock and I just throw them on the other guns. I figure, well, why not? You know? Um, but man, it's this, I just love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, I think Magpul makes, I don't know if Magpul makes a replacement stock for this one or not. Um, I know that Boyd's guns makes one and some of the other companies out there, but, um, I, they make a replacement stock for the Ruger ranch, like in a 308 and 30 out six and a lot of the other calibers and maybe they'll add one at some point. I have no idea, but that's uh, definitely one of my favorites. So squib says, can you resend the link? Okay. I'll do that. Um, okay, let's kind of move over to let's move over to handguns now. When it comes oh. to accessorizing your handguns, go ahead, David. Yeah, I'm working on sending the link over to Squibby for you. Oh, I was gonna say I got it right now, man. We're good. Oh, okay, cool. And Honda said that he was working this evening, so he couldn't join us. So Honda, I hear you, buddy, man. No, no problems, bud. Am I missing out on anybody? You guys ever want to jump on any of these chats? Just make sure you uh, email me at thecalibercorner@gmail.com, and we'll bring you over here if you want to be on the show. Anytime, man. I mean, I just put you back. I, I'll get you on the list, and I just keep resending the links uh, every week when we do the show. So, uh, Okay, so let's talk a little bit about accessorizing the pistols because, I mean, you know, man, when you talk about some of these guns, you can completely, completely change them, everything, everything, especially if you've got something where your trigger pack is the firearm, like a P320, and, you know, you can go with after you know different frames, and you can go with custom this and custom that. Um, are there any basic accessories that you guys tend to add to most of your firearms when you first buy them? Is there anything you just typically change out or something you have a habit of changing? Yeah, my, the, fir the first accessory I would suggest for a pistol mm -hmm. would be ammunition, bullets. That's <laughs> well, yeah, obviously. But, I mean, do you go with, like, a hoe grip? Do you go with, like, like, like the talon tape? Or do you go with different sights? Or me, I've no. got a habit of putting steel guide rods and stainless, you know, springs and anything that comes with a polymer set. The problem with tape is the tape always goes bad. Uh, okay. I've got uh, talon grips on my uh, USP and my Shield 49 that I ain't trouble with them at all. Either one of them or the, the, those things, they stick and they stick. Uh, I haven't had any issue with them. And I've had them on them for a few years now. It's the, it's the same ones I first put on and nurse still on them might depend if they rub on anything or if you use them a lot or i mean i could see them keeping their texture for a long time they've been around for a while too so i'm sure they work well and the um, yeah. hasn't lost any of its stickiness or anything to them mm -hmm. so uh, so uh real quick squib is joining in uh squib what's going on man how you doing uh i'm at work as usual all right all right so, Scooby, uh, you, you guys to say anything you want to tell us about accessories at all? We've covered all different platforms, ARs, AKs, bolt action, yeah, I, shotguns. Yeah. I've been trying to listen off and on, and uh, some of the stuff you were talking about, I don't know if I would have had anything uh, useful to add. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my guns are Milserp, so mm -hmm. my accessories are the items that were issued to the troops with those guns, whether it be an oil bottle or oh, yeah. a multi-tool, or the proper sling, or uh, the, the the actual bayonet scabbard and uh, and uh, frog for the bayonet, if possible, uh, you know, the appropriate uh, cartridge belt, uh, and the you know holster for the handgun, the correct cleaning rod. The the list of that stuff is uh, really it. It varies per per gun. I mean, some things like if you want to get an armor's kit to match your milsurf gun, that could be some serious money. Or uh, they could be a dime a dozen. But um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Raphael told me one day, he said, you're a completist. You like to get the gun and then get everything that goes around it. And I think he's right. It's kind of part of the fun of collecting them. And uh, it's really interesting, too, when you um, 
you see all the variations, like on a Mosin Nagant, how many different countries made them and oh, yeah, different yeah. variations or, yeah. or the ones that were captured and redone and, and stuff like that. And at, at that point, I think one of the top accessories to get is a book. As a matter of fact, uh, I was on uh, Duke Fraser's show last night, and he uh, showed a book on uh, Colt revolvers. And if you're looking to get reproduction uh, black powder revolvers, and you want to know if Uberti or Pieta, or well, really those are about the only two that are making the reproduction, if how accurate they are to the original, uh, uh, he was showing a book that uh, has a lot of detail as far as the production of, of these handguns going back into the 19th century with markings and everything else so that you can determine if your reproduction is, is, is fairly close to the original or what you might be able to modify or change up possibly if you want to try to give it a more realistic look or, or, or that sort of thing. So I would say that for some guns, having a really good book on that particular t style of gun would be an accessory that I would be looking for. Yeah, especially if you're going to start to get into Mosin Nagants, and that way you can look for what is an authentic sniper, what do you need to know about the serial numbers. I think if you go to um, 762x54r.net, you can look up your Mosin and basically get it narrowed down to which factory produced it based off of the markings that are on it, uh, looking at the numbers, looking at – and it's really cool because you can find out if you've got something that's that's rare or not. You know, If you're getting something that's authentic that somebody's advertising it, you can actually look that, that little website up on your phone. And you just, you just go off the barrel length and you go off the production date, you go off the, the stampings on the receiver, and you can narrow it down to basically the exact factory where it was pretty trigger, grips, sights. Let's see, if it's an EDC gun, uh, Talon grips on my SD9VE are awesome and were $17.99. Yeah, one complaint about the SD9VE, the texture is not very aggressive on the sides. It would be nice to put some Talon grips on there. That actually is my bedside gun because I shoot it and I do shoot it well. Um... You know, night sights, a lot of people are against night sights or they think they're unnecessary. If you've ever actually tried pointing at something in low light or just actually held your gun up in low light or no light, and I mean, obviously you need a light of your target and identify your target, but it's amazing those little night sights. I mean, granted, you don't want to spend too much time trying to focus on your night sights if you've got a target coming at you. But in a low light situation, I mean, they are very nice. I've got them on several firearms and man, I... I don't regret them. I know some people don't like the dots on them because they're kind of like a two-tone look un un sometimes, depending on what you go with because there's all these different night sights that are out now. Um, let's see. What else we got here? Uh, Sam of Anarchy says, if you had a Sig Sauer P226 Mark 25 or any Sig with a rail, you could equip a Sig Sauer STL 900L Tactical Laser Light or a Surefire X300 Ultra Weapon Light. Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, I've got a – what is it? The sh Is it Surefire? Yeah, I've got, I believe I've got a Surefire on the Glock 17. No, no, on the SD9VE. I'm actually running an Olight on my uh, Glock 17 right now to see if I can get it to break, but it's not breaking. Uh, better to get a tactical light before the night sights. Yes, David, I agree with you, but also maybe a flashlight. So you can use your flashlight to identify your targets. So you're not pointing in the direction, you know, with your light and not making a bad judgment call on what you light up for your target. Um, I've always been a fan of using a separate flashlight, but again, tactical light is a bedside light that's attached to the firearm. Definitely, definitely. Man, yeah. with some of these flashlights, they're bright enough now where you can actually have the thing pointing at the floor and still be able to see what's in front of you. And watch the number of lumens. In my opinion, you can overdo it. Like uh, our bedroom upstairs, it's it's all white walls, and if it's pitch black and you turn that TLR TLR HL on, that thing is the glare coming off the wall is almost too much. Um, I would almost say maybe pull back on something that's not quite so bright, unless you think you're going to have to take it outside and go off into the bushes, or you've got the woods in your backyard, or you've got some sort of a, a, a true tactical use. You want to light stuff up, yeah, but for home defense, you can't, in my opinion, you can overdo it with lumens in the house. That's just me. Yeah, uh, no, <laughs> you're absolutely right, Travis. That O-light you sent me, I was attaching some gloss white trim to a gloss white storm door <laughs> and uh, trying to line up the holes. You know, you got a, you got your uh, pilot hole and your hole drilled in the frame of the door. Yeah. And I was outside and I couldn't see it. It was casting a shadow, and I said, I, I'll get the O light. Oh man. <laughs> Ooh, that was like getting. Do you put it on, uh, you put it on low? Uh, what's low? <laughs> does it have two? Does that one have two settings? I can't remember. Ah, uh, if it does, I don't. I you? don't want to figure out how to use it. I just want it on, and I, I want. Normally, I want it on at full power. 
but I was out in, you know, it was cloudy out, but it wasn't, it was, you know, you could see normal, but it was gloss white on gloss white and the reflection, it was almost like flash blindness from, just, from MIG welding or TIG welding. It's like, wow. I, I, I've reviewed, okay, I've done a lot of the reviews and I can't remember specifically on that one, but do watch my video because I think if you barely press it, it goes low. And if you let go and press it again, it goes, it goes uh, higher or you can double click on it to go low and high. But watch the video because I do cover uh, the specifics on it. So. I'm pretty sure it's a two. It's a two step. I've, I've, it's like a five right lumen. And a, I've yeah. got it right here, and when I click it on, it's on full power. And I, oh, wait, there's the low. I found it by accident. Yeah, there you see, go. This low, I would probably hardly ever use. I, it's I a five see. lumen. It's for like long. If you need to use it, like to, if you're on a trail and you're you're completely lost, and you want to max. You want to max out the battery life. Yeah, um, the way you used it when you were walking down the sidewalk, I could yeah. see how that would be useful. But for you know a crayon eater like me, I want full power every time I hit it. The, yeah. the EDCs that I was carrying before had like three settings. And if you bumped it just wrong, you got that strobe effect. And oh. you know, when, you're, when you're trying to light up something for your boss, it doesn't go over well. So this yeah. is kind of idiot proof for me. But yeah, the white on white, uh, you just, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't think right off the bat that a really bright flashlight would, would be that bad, but you could temporarily blind yourself in a self-defense situation. So yeah. Yeah. I, the, um, Phoenix TK16 I have on my uh, AR15. I usually keep that set on 300 lumens. It's not too bright, and you'll still be able to see fairly well in a dark situation with that. That's like your standard flashlight brightness, anyways. Yeah. And uh, if I have to, if I have to go outside, I can hit the pressure switch and adjust that all the way up to a thousand. Oh yeah. And that, that's, I mean, that's enough to light up anything in the backyard. <laughs> um, real quick, David, do you want to bring that back? Were you showing off your night sights on one of your handguns? Is that, was that your, your Ruger? No, this is the uh, P320. Okay, this okay. Full size and 45. And I got the lights off in my room, and I don't know how, if it's showing up, but in the dark, they glow like yeah, we a, could see a nice green. And now, are those just uh, like a luminescent paint, or are those actually tritium? I can't remember. The These are the tritium. These came okay. with the gun. And on the outside is like you, uh, Rich was showing us on his shotgun. Your it's rain. got the white paint around it, and yeah. it's got the green center. Yeah. And when you got good light, they shine bright white. But dark in my room right now, they glow a really nice green. And uh, real quick, while we got your attention, David, why don't you tell us about this uh, 13-year-old kid that's got a gun channel now? Is that what's going on? Yeah, his name's Connor, and mm -hmm. his, his channel is Guns with Con. And right now, he's he's got parental permission. He's got safe areas and all that other kind of stuff. Uh, he's been doing a lot of 177 caliber tests with his, uh, with his pellet guns. He actually caught a pellet in one of his videos and i've watched all kinds of people i mean hooty who is famous for trying to catch bullets and on his you know second shot or whatever he caught one of the pellets in, in a water bottle which was really cool but he's a nice young kid he just started doing videos and uh you know he's he said you know he's gonna come out with some 22 stuff and some hmr uh, 17 hmr stuff so go check out his videos give him a thumbs up give him a subscribe and uh help him out yeah, I went and put the link over there on the uh, – it's over on the Gun Channel side if you guys are over there. And on the YouTube side, I put a link in there too. He's only got 177 subscribers. I think we can fix that. I think we can definitely – I'll go sign up and check out his videos. Again, he's doing it the right way. You know, he's being safe about it. That's what we need, man. We need more representation like that from the youth. Uh, really cool in thing. social media right now, not just competition, but – in social media what's that david the really cool thing about it is when i found him he had like 30 subscribers and then between like mountaineer marksman the crazy scotsman me uh black cat outdoors a bunch of a bunch of gun channels guys have just stumbled across his channel and in a couple days he's went from 30 to 174 so we could get this yeah. kid we can yeah. get this kid to 500 subs in no time oh yeah easy easy I'll get him up there right now he's got 178 so you guys click on that just sub to his channel and you can check out his videos you get a chance but uh yeah it seems like a pretty decent kid now do, do his parents actually come out and say you know this is 
understand that he's doing this under our supervision or does he have his first video state that or what? No, he uh, he's he's pretty much brand new into it. So, you know, you definitely got to be patient with with his camera work. He's, he's just a 13 year old kid. And so far, all he's been shooting is his pellet stuff. And, you know, I've met he he asked in one of his videos what he should do next. And a bunch of people in the comment section say, make sure you have your parental you know, supervision, make sure you have your safety equipment. And he seems to be, he seems to be pretty on top of it. And, uh, he said he's got plenty of area to shoot, you know, so right now with his little pellet guns, he's just in his backyard shooting from his porch, but you know, he, he lives out in an area where he can do stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, definitely go check him out. And like I said, be patient. He's just a kid. And sometimes he's videotaping the, the ground while he's walking around, but Hey, we're all friends with the gun snob and he videotapes the ground. Oh yeah. No, it doesn't matter. You know, give the kids some time and some potential. I see how a lot of the channels have you go back and watch some of your favorite YouTubers, watch their first video versus what they're doing now. And uh, you're going to be amazed at, at the growth that'll happen, especially this kid being young. Dude, with technology and editing tools and software, he's going to be making amazing videos in no time. You well, know, and the kids are kids. Kids are awesome on computers, anyway. So yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, we talk about you know one of my favorite shows ever in YouTube history, internet history, was when CloverTech was doing the uh, Next Generation shows, mm -hmm. and that's what we all talk about. If we want to have a Second Amendment, we got to have these kids come up behind us. So he's a kid that's in the firearms. And, you know, here, you, here's where you can put your money where your mouth is. Either support the next generation or stop talking about supporting the next generation. Yeah. You know, so think about that, guys, especially when it comes to a lot of the local shooting programs you might have in your neck of the woods. If they might be looking for a sponsor, they might just want somebody to help out, you know, keeping those things going, supporting them. Any of you guys that have schools that still have shooting teams, we need to keep those going. Uh, that's very important, too. In terms of competition and stuff like that, I mean, our, you know. Because a lot of times, you know, there's always talk that they want to eliminate some of those shooting sports programs and they want to eliminate those competitions and things like that. So, uh, no, we'll definitely go. I'm going to check out his channel. I'll, I'll go check out his content and see what he's got. That is that is very cool. Very cool. Um, a little bit more on the flashlights. Let's see. Rob D. New York Outcast says light discipline is very important at times. The less is better. I agree. Uh, let's see. Went over and subbed. LOL. Probably better than the crap that I put out. LOL. Uh, you know, hey, man, these 13-year-old kids, man, they're they're making awesome videos anyway. If you look at some of the top YouTube channels, they're like Nerf gun channels, they're airsoft channels, they're video game channels. These kids don't even have a driver's license yet. They're making banks, so they know what they're doing. Don't let them fool you. They're much more dangerous than they look. So um, a little bit more over on the pistols, kind of going back to the accessories again. Uh, what else works for you guys for accessories? I know when I get my 1911, I'm probably going to leave the grips on there, but that's I know that's one of the first accessories a lot of guys like to do is they like to change out the grip panels. Um, what about you guys? Sights at all? Do you guys ever swap out any sights on your guns? No, I'm back to I'm a minimalist, so I don't want to, I don't change anything. Yeah. With my 1911, I, I'm I'm going to put some of the blue lock grips on there, like I've been saying, uh, and that's just for looks. The, the grips that are on there now feel really good in the hand. They get a nice, good, firm grip on it. It's not going to slip. I'm just going to put the blue ones on there because I think they look cool. But other than that, I, now I have I have been getting a little bit more educated about the triggers. And uh, my P229 has got a trigger that I'm not exactly happy with. Now, I mentioned that in my video, and I caught a bunch of flack for that. Because oh, yeah. apparently it's... Yeah. Uh, apparently it was, it's a good trigger that's in it and I just don't know any better, but that trigger might get replaced. But so far, all the rest of my guns, I really like the triggers. Uh, and I like the stuff. I like the way they come. You know, I think the factory knows better than me and I buy the guns that I like. So I usually just keep them the way they are. That trigger you're talking about, it doesn't have the factory DAC trigger, does it? That DAK trigger. It's like the double action with like the two different, pound weights on it i know i've seen those in some of those surplus guns like classic farms is selling uh you can get the DAC trigger the double action only trigger that they sell but it's a different type yours isn't yeah. like that is it no it's the double action single action okay it's, standard standard okay okay yeah i think it's the uh i think it's the elite model is what the name of the is the yeah. level of whatever model of pistol it is okay uh it's just really sloppy like 
on the CZ that I just got is a double single action. And when you pull through the trigger, it's smooth and tense the whole way. Consistent. And when you get to yeah. the brake and you, you know, flip your finger back and forth, it's not sloppy. It's still a nice, clean, smooth flow through the trigger. And after it breaks and you're going into the reset, it's still nice and clean and smooth. The P229 is just, it's the best way I can describe it is it's sloppy. Your CZ, I mean, I've seen the videos, but let everybody know, what is the what is the CZ even featuring on your channel? Your uh, the, models or what? The, the first CZ I've got is a uh, the uh, 75 PO1 with the Omega trigger. And it's it's um, it's well worth the wait uh i've wanted the cz for a long time and i had dreams about the shadow and then i started realizing that that's a little too expensive to buy right now mm -hmm. so i went with the 75 with the omega trigger thanks to you travis for all the help you gave me on that one and, yeah no uh, man i you know that's the quality dude that's all i get to say is you can tell the craftsmanship that still goes into those those 75s man i mean you know, to me, next best thing to, uh, to, uh, you know, some of the Brownings and things like that, you know, so, uh, what about, okay. What about magazines for that? Are they readily available for that gun? I, I don't know. I just got them. It came with two magazines. I've only had the gun for a week, four days. Four days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Yeah. 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 And, uh, so I haven't looked into any of the extra mags and then obviously, you know, most of the mags that I'm going to be able to buy here in the state will have to be 10 round magazines. So that's something that I'd look for at a gun show out of state. Now, we do have a request from Sam of, Anar Sam of Anarchy 92. Could you show us the SIG? Do you have it floating around anywhere where we can get to it easily? Or? The 229? Yeah, somebody, Sam of Anarchy, would like to see it. I've seen it before. The You've got a video on it. You've got a great video on it. You guys need to check out. Yeah, give me just one second. And uh, Storm and Norman Gunworks says, Shims eliminate the side-to-side -side slop and the trigger on a double action. So maybe look into some... Some shims on that before you go spend the money on a whole new trigger setup, which you can drop, you know, a couple hundred dollars on that if you want to. Um, Ian says, I just jumped in real quick to say you guys rock. I'll catch this chat later. Everybody in the panel rocks. Thank you, Ian. I appreciate you joining in and watching, buddy. Like I said, tonight's all about the accessories, man. Just throwing stuff. I've, I've been buying some parts for some of my guns, and I thought, let's talk about this. What kind of stuff do, uh, do you guys put on your guns when you get them? Me again. Now, I'm going to tell you something, guys. When you look at those stainless steel guide rods, um, I'm just not a big fan of the polymer guide rods. I'm okay with them and Glock and stuff, but some of the guns, like my FD9, had some return to battery issues. I went with the stainless model. Some people claim it can crack the frame, so be very careful with any uh, gun modifications that you do. All right, take it away, David. Yeah, this is the 229, and I don't know if – see how see how much – I mean, you barely, I'm barely touching it, and it's moving. Okay. And I, I just don't like that. And then you pull through. Make sure it's happy. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, clear it, clear it, clear it. I wasn't going to say nothing. I ain't your nanny, so, yeah. But, you, you know, you pull through the double action, and it's, it's nice and clean. And then you can still feel a little bit of slop right there. And then on the reset, oh, yeah, it's got a real short travel, but there's something I mean, it's just Ooh. to me, it's, it's really loose right there. But it's okay. So people that give you feedback on that, what are they saying? You just don't know such triggers, or yeah, you do it. I mean, that's that's well, almost like I hate to say this. This is going to give you some criticism, but that's almost like PT one eleven G two C amount of slack in a trigger. You know, that's almost that's almost nuts, you know. Here's the C Z single action, double action. And I'm actually like if I just flick it, it doesn't move at all. So okay. I've got to actually put pressure on it. And then now could it be because the springs are getting worn out, your trigger mechanism on the SIG because you put a lot of rounds through it or not? See, I, I bought the SIG used and yeah. the guy who I bought it from really wasn't a big fan of it. So I know he didn't shoot oh, it a whole okay. lot. Okay. And I haven't really shot it a whole lot. But when I pull through the double, you know, uh, that's tight. Like, there's tension against yeah, my yeah. finger. There. And then when I reset and I hit the travel, there's tension right there. It's not sloppy it's not at all. It's not sloppy tension. Yeah, yeah, I've got full control of that trigger. And bang. You know, and, and like I said, maybe it's just I just don't know any better. And that's what the people in the comment section were saying was I just don't know what I'm talking about. But I mean, look, look. I'm just—you can see—I'm just flicking it with my finger, and it's moving. Where the CZ didn't move at all. 
I would maybe look into some some upgraded springs or some replacement springs to put more tension back on. Well, like you said, if it hasn't been shot a lot, it really shouldn't make much of a difference. So, yeah. I got you, man. That CZ looks nice, dude. Um, oh, man. Let's see. Over on the YouTube side, we've got a channel, or we've got a channel. We've got a question over here. Uh, can y'all talk about any proven, reliable light green laser combos? Storm and Norman, I don't do lasers. Uh, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Streamlight. I do like their flashlights, but I don't know. I mean, they do make some, I believe, green laser combos you can get with weapon lights that are up there in the price. You're probably looking at like three hundred dollars or something like that, if not more. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm not I don't know. Do you guys have any experience with laser light combos at all? No, I'm not a laser person either. I, I'm not a fan. So. If you do some, just do some research, read some reviews, watch some videos, read up on the feedback, read the negative reviews, the one and two star reviews on those products, and see why people complain about them. If you start to see an inherent problem, if a bunch of people complain about it, not not holding zero in terms of the the, the laser light itself, if the dots like like floating. Or if they talk about poor battery life, or they talk about you know after a year they're not working anymore, you see a lot of complaints about it. I would just say pass on that model. I mean, sometimes you just got to get down and just nitty gritty and do some of the research yourself. Um, unfortunately, but that's you know that's what it comes down to sometimes. So uh, let's see. Rolling Trip says, if you think that PO one is awesome, send it to Cajun and see what true perfection is. Is that who is that Rolling Trip? Is it Raging Cajun or something like that? Is that somebody does uh, trigger jobs or what? I mean, the trigger's nice right out of the box, but, you know, uh, let's see. Let's see. Kingpin, you said that that is the combat elite. So, uh, but yeah, you know, for accessories, again, kind of going back to it, I, you know, I keep it pretty simple. Like I was saying with those, those stainless steel guide rods, um, I did put one in my PT-111 G2. And that was just because at that point there were people complaining about the guide rod failing around the 5,000 round mark or less, and then also having coils popping off the back of the guide rod. And I didn't want to deal with that. So, but any, remember guys, anytime you go aftermarket, you risk voiding the warranty. Uh, you can, some of these things can crack the frames if you're not careful. And, uh, but again, in my SD9 VE with that stainless steel guide rod set that I put in it, I put in the um, NDZ performance set, which is like 20 bucks. And uh, it does definitely gives a lot more authority going back into battery and you feel a lot less recoil. Um, it's a lot less sloppy in the slide, a lot more tension, but I have some people that have, that have said that, Oh, it, it can crack the frame, but I've got probably a thousand rounds through that SD nine VE at this point, And I've not seen any kind of frame cracking at all ever since I changed out that, uh, that guide rod. Uh, let's see here. Otherwise I think that's pretty much about it. All right. I think we've covered pretty much the gamut of accessories. We've talked about cases. We've talked about lights. We've talked about, uh, the basic accessory slings, you know, all those kinds of things that you tend to look at. And the reason why I was kind of inspired on this topic is because when I went to Walmart, I just kind of went by the ammo case and went to the accessories because everything is out now. Everything is in stock for the spring. So you're seeing all the different cleaning supplies and all the different items that are out there. Other accessories to look into, you know, if you consider an accessory, but a boar snake is nice to have if you want to save some time. Um, otherwise, you know, that there's a billion things out there you can spend your money on. Um, things to avoid, you know, like I would say dirt cheap dot sites. Um, I've had pretty good luck. I've tested some of the generic like angle four grips and things like that on, uh, on my farms and never had any problems with them. But like, I've got the generic embus sites on my bear Creek, the rear, and it's okay, but you can definitely tell a difference in the quality of the plastic and stuff. You pretty much get what you pay for when you go on the real low end. And if you go over to places like wish.com, they sell like knockoff Magpul furniture and stuff like that. I would say just go for the original. I mean, if you're spending hundreds of dollars on these guns, you know, what's an extra 10 or 20 bucks on a part versus buying, you know, going generic versus buying the original when the original is only 10 or 20 bucks more. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, guys, make sure you check out C4 Defense, nine o'clock Eastern time, eight o'clock Central time. Make sure you check out Sarge's uh, podcast that he's got going on tonight. It's going to be a good one. Uh, let's see. Otherwise, I'm trying to see if that's about it. Uh, real quick, let's just – anybody else want to chime in with anything else accessory-wise before we go? I know the Night Strike had to bug out and Ellis had to bug out. So, guys, thanks for joining in. Anything that you guys want to say about accessories at all? No? Don't overdo it if you do. Yeah, don't don't go mall ninja. You only need you only need one tactical light. You don't, yeah. <laughs> you know some of the stuff you can just go really crazy on it. Right, question for you, Kingpin. What sites came on your uh, CZ? Does it have just the white dot? I don't remember. I know I watched the video on the factory night sites. Kind of like Novak. Are they the Novak three dots? 
Yeah, it's just the the standard three white dot sight. It's not. They're just solid whites. I was curious because my my uh, P10C the, um, suppressor lights on that they're actually night lights. I was wondering if you can it or not. Yeah, no, I was looking at the same one, and uh, I, I decided to go with the 75 instead, but the sights on that one were really nice. The the, the P10C. Yeah. Was it, was it the one like I got, the um, suppressor height, or was it just the standard height? Well, they had both. They had the one with the with the threaded barrel, and then they had the one, I guess, standard, I guess you would call it. But uh, the one thing that really turned me off and – Another thing that kind of turned me away from buying the CZ Shadow with uh, Shadow Two at the time was the only ones at the store that I bought them from were in that desert white, and I'm not really a big fan of that. And the only yeah. Shadow Two that he could get would have been the desert white, and I just I, I want the all black. Yeah, I I like the urban gray one, so that's why I got that. And the I, urban gray was supposed to be like a limited edition thing too, so I was like, I'd better grab on that while they still got them. Yeah, they didn't have any of those. These are the only, thing, only two tones that they had were the, uh, I, I call it Desert White, but I'm sure that's not what the name of it is. But anybody who's familiar with the two-tone CZ, it's like a cream color. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's almost like their version of Flat Dark Earth, but it's whiter. Yeah. The sand color, yeah. Uh, this one, the my, C, my P, um, 10C, I actually had to have the local gun shop ordered that in for me because they didn't have them in stock either. They had one in stock. Went to go put it on layaway the next day and they had already sold it. So they went and ordered that one in for me. All right. Well, guys, I think we're going to go and wrap it up. That way you all got time to get on over to uh, Sarge's chat and get ready for that. So, again, make sure you guys support GunTube.org. Get on over there and get on Patreon and help out Night Strikes so we can keep buying server space and keep posting our videos. Uh, make sure you guys get over to GunChannels.com and check it out. And uh, joining us over on the Gun Channel side, we did see some paper plane crash hanging out over there. And uh, David was also over there, too. David Bowling was over there with us. See if anybody else is checking in. I'm refreshing the chat. All right, you guys were over there chatting a little bit about the night sights. And uh, joining us this evening on the YouTube side, we've got Storm and Norman Gunworks, Kingpin, Tacos and French Fries, Rob D. New York Outcast, Mr. Mr. Trek Fan Dan. Thanks for watching. Andrew Faulkner's with us. Uh, Sam of Anarchy 92, Gizzard Gary in the house. Uh, let's see, Rob D. New York Outcast, Sam of Anarchy 92, The Rolling Trip was watching this evening. Uh, some of you guys kind of chimed in and said a few things. Vandalistic of Vlogs was with us. Good to have us. Good to have you over here, buddy. Uh, David Ramirez in the house, and Jason Stewart was here too, all right, and Solo Yacker was here, what's going on Solo Yacker, and Squibload was here and there, let's see, uh, let's see, Tim Foley, Net Flutter in the house too, Mad Sexy 45, ACP 22 LR 556 NATO, come on Mad Sexy, come on man, that's just crazy, I gotta say that every time, now let's call you Mad Sexy Man of the Night, right? Okay, sketchy roll in the house. Uh, Tim Foley, I think that's about it. Deceived Toast, I want to thank you for the super chats this evening. Hopefully we answered your questions. And, again, thank you for letting us know about those slings. I will definitely check them out when I go to Cabela's next time. Uh, Jumpy Killer in the house. Tim 18 Wills was with us, too. <coughs> uh, let's see here. Tim 18 Wills did say if the spacer is not tight enough for an MMP or shield, try friction tape from the hardware store. Oh, you were, I think you were talking about those, uh, those add ons for the grips, the, uh, the extra like little furniture you put on the magazines. Yeah. Patriot in the dark was with us. A lot of people checking out the show tonight. Uh, Ellis was out there and here. And I think that's pretty much it. SS pawn in the house too. So, all right. Midnight range TM. I wasn't sure if you were with us. I think you were, but I couldn't tell. And two gun kitty catnip outlaw um cadillac jack man a lot of people blue still 44 all right so this has been uh caliber corner episode number 95 accessory buyer's guide uh hopefully gave you some good suggestions some stuff to check out some stuff to stay away from uh we should be back next thursday again if you guys ever want to hear about a particular topic just go ahead email me at the caliber corner at gmail.com or just post some comments down below on this chat and we will talk about uh, that topic if we can so uh we'll have a, a giveaway coming up here soon well, not soon. At some point in the near future, happens how fast it's going to happen. We'll be giving away the 224 Valkyrie Upper. Uh, that's going to be going off out there to a lucky viewer. And so that'll probably be around the 20,000 subscriber mark if we make it, if we're around here long enough. 
And uh, we'll definitely make that happen, and we'll get the details out to you on that. So, otherwise, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching for the last uh, couple hours. Y'all get on over to C4 Defense's channel. Check out Sarge and go get detained. Otherwise, guys, I want you all to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right, y'all take care and have a great night. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Alicia. Go box. Adios, Felicia. Adios.